Okay. Howdy, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Debauchery Circus Campaign here on the Random Rhapsody Network. I'm Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and GM, and joining me around my virtual table today are Stephen, Jr., Bree, and Brandy. Say hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Okay. So we've got a few scheduling announcements to get through today. First off, we will be airing the next episode of Magi Nights, an Echo from the Stars, this Wednesday, September the 21st at 7 p.m. Central. Also, we have three new one-shots coming up for this holiday season. The conclusion to our September one-shot, The Defenders of the Wall, will be on Sunday, September the 25th at 5 p.m. Central, which will be hosted by me. Um, from there, we have our Halloween hunt shot, one shot, which is called The Hunt for the Tarrasque, which will be aired on Sunday, October the 23rd, and hosted by Com- Kyle Thomas of the Fab Five. Finally, I'm pleased to announce that our final one shot for 2022 will be on Monday, December the 19th, and hosted by Bree McKnight of the Debauchery Circus. Hello. Yep. You can keep up to date on all of our scheduling by following us on Facebook as Random Rhapsody TV and on Twitter as at Random underscore Rhapsody. Okay, that should do it for the announcements. So join us as we dive into the world of Laropa and continue on with the adventures of the Debauchery Circus. And we're back. So when we last left off, the debauchery circus had traveled to Rowena, the oasis capital of the Mar Garden Federation, in an attempt to acquire a dream route for the Iridite Conclave. To accomplish this goal, Blaznir, Kaya, who is now going by Lapis, and Ichabod had entered the Azure Championship Gladiator Tournament while Corrin and Willow were recruited to help Willow's former mentor break into the vault of the Federation, Zayn. Unfortunately, by the time the group had completed these goals, the route had already been given away, which left the party wondering whom the relic could have been gifted to. The next day, the squadron separated in the morning to collect the rewards for winning the tournament. Blazner acquired his new cloak, Lapis went to get her tattoo, and Korn and Ichabod went to the guild bunkhouse to learn about the status of Ichabod's wife and son. <laughs> that meeting didn't go quite the way Ichabod was expecting, and though the and through the course of the conversation with Ishmael's handler, he had discovered that his son had lied to his mother about being indentured to the guild, and the whole arrangement Prudence had to, to work off Ishmael's debt was nothing more than an elaborate ruse to allow the boy to continue working for the guild. This revelation um, that his eldest son was a willing thief caused the paladin to flee the meeting in anger. Corrin attempted to talk the paladin down, but instead, Ichabod sought refuge at the local mosque to Crandage, 
to try to find some spiritual guidance while the rest of the party um, explored the bazaar for amusing trinkets and things like that. This, too, was eventually cut short by a very angry Cerulean dragon bursting out of the lake and beginning to rain down his fury upon the city of Rowena. And so, debauchery circus, you all knew full well that the dragon attacking the city was, in fact, the Zaim in his true form which was also a pretty good indication that he had discovered that his vault had been broken into. Ichabod, of course, immediately ran to his ex-wife's residence to try to take her someplace safe. But the rest of you were able to deduce where he'd go, and with Lapis's direction, you all were able to regroup. Which was a good thing, too, since the moment Ichabod burst into the scene, he found prudence and fear not, in the company of a very familiar tiefling, whom you all had met in the Colosseum as the MC. He, too, was trying to convince Prudence to leave the city, and once Corrin informed them all that he could teleport the group away, even the stubborn Prudence had to agree to the plan. So as she and Fearnot had headed upstairs to collect some things for traveling, a question comes to each of your minds. And that question is, what is your most recent or frequent nightmare? And Ichabod, since you're the one who rolled, it's kind of appropriate that you should go first. Okay. Um, so I, I dream that I'm back on the battlefield in, uh, in Golfrin. Um, and the battle is over, and I'm walking through and, and checking all the bodies, and I flip one over, and it's my son, Ishmael, and I see him laying there dead. Oh, jeez. And then I geez. wake up. <laughs> that's my dream. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty terrible dream for any father, to be sure. Okay, I like it. Um, Lapis, how about you? I feel like her recurring nightmare would be for some reason not being able to wander. She she can't stay stationary long. She needs to get out there and explore. So I think if her ability to wander were cut off, that would definitely be a nightmare for her. <laughs> okay, I like it. Blazenir, how about you? Oh. Uh... Sorry, I thought my mic was muted. Uh, let's see, nightmare. Uh, I think Blazing Nightmare. It. He, I don't think he has any recurring ones. It's more of just whatever. Honestly, probably just a random slew of whatever happened recently. That, when he wakes up, doesn't make much sense. But dreamt that we were in the Colosseum and you fell in the lava. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I and think also just... there was a shark in the lob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fire shark. Fire shark. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, um, Corin, how about you? You already know what it is. Oh no. The dream <laughs> of a tree sprouting to fruition, choking the life out of the world, destroying everyone and everything that's on it. Corrin see that every night now when he goes to sleep. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what put me on this path in the first place. Indeed yeah. it is. Yeah, that is a pretty horrific dream and it does definitely plague your 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 um sleeping as well as waking moments, I imagine. Okay. I like it. Well, um, Debauchery Circus, by now all of you have stepped inside the small rectangular hovel that Ichabod's family calls home. It is a sandstone structure, roughly seven and a half feet tall, with a warm um, and comfortable kitchen and sitting area, along with a small uh, sitting nook with a window that seems to have been caved inwards as though something too big had been pushed through the opening. Standing, I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not at all. 
Um, Standing between your group and the staircase leading to the second floor of the hovel is the pink-skinned tiefling tiefling that most of you had met in the tournament, who is acting as the MC. He has red horns that swoop back from his forehead and long black hair that is currently tied at the nape of his neck. He is wearing baggy yellow pants that cinch around the ankles and a bright blue vest which is worn open so that his well-defined chest is visible. He wears several necklaces around his neck and at least two rings on each hand and a pair of uh, green leather bracers around his wrists. On the belt around his waist, he has what you can all recognize to be a bag of holding tied at one side, and he also has a black rod that's tucked into the belt, as well as a small drum and a dulcimer hanging from it. You can all hear Prudence and Fear Not moving around upstairs, but occasionally that sound is muffled over by the very large explosions of force that is happening throughout the city. It's hard to judge where exactly the dragon is based on is is based on the sounds, but the house is o- is only slightly rattling whenever a blast hits the ground, so you can at least guess that wherever it is, it's not overhead. But debauchery circus, what are you wanting to do? Well, after I slapped Ichabod, and it didn't end in my death, I'm immediately just going to say, right. As Ichabod is clearly emotionally unstable at the moment, here is the plan. We will all go get his son, and then we will return here as soon as possible. The three of you finish your packing. As soon as we are back, I am casting my spell, which will require exactly one minute, and then we are leaving. Any questions? Um, the the tiefling looks over at you, and, and he says... Now you know where where Ichabod is, or I mean Ishmael is. We can find him. I'm real sick of looking at this Aladdin ass motherfucker. So yeah. I'm leave. <laughs> he, he well, you, you just turn around and walk away, and as he he, um, you tell him that he's kind of rubbing his chin. He's got a little bit of a beard there, and he he says, "Well, if you know where he is, you might as well go go get him now." Uh, I'll I'll I'll. I'll, I'll I'll keep an eye on them and make sure they get out okay. Where where do we want to meet at? Here? Yes. We will return here as soon as we have him. Very well. Now be careful. With everything Thank that's you. going on out there, chances are looters are about. Looting, rioting, can't be too much different from the insanity of the mm-hmm. Feywild. True. Probably. Um, while, while he was talking, I stepped outside... I'm clenching my fists and taking deep breaths, and I'm gonna cast locate object on that um, that scale that I hope really hope Ishmael took. <laughs> okay. Now, um, how how um how large of a distance is a uh, f- fine object or locate object? Uh, locate object. It's a thousand feet, I believe. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah it's it is within a thousand feet. feet of you. But I I have concentration up to ten minutes, so I can. Walk places. Travel around the city. <laughs> yeah, we can we can run around. Yeah, so I mean, I I will just re- remind you that um a thousand feet is basically like twenty percent of a mile, so it's not like a huge um huge uh distance. You know what I mean? So um, but you can hold on to it for ten minutes. Um, I will also remind you that um, the place that, that they were at um, was the bunkhouse, which was in the same yeah. district that you currently are now. It took you about thirty minutes to get from where you were from there to Prudence's house. Oh, okay, so I should I should probably wait. You probably want to wait until you're getting yeah. closer to the bunkhouse. All right. Well, in that case, I start walking towards the bunkhouse. Okay. Yep, just to help you save the, just to help you save a, a spell slot. I, I do appreciate that, DM sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So you, as a group, are starting to um, head out, heading towards the back towards the bunkhouse where you last saw Ishmael. Now, mm-hmm. the first thing I'm, who I'm, I need to know is who's leading the um, the charge to this, and um, are you just 
running as, as fast as you can? Um, or uh, what, what's the plan to get there? Well, I mean, regardless of who's leading, I'm going to at least make sure that we're not, like, running into any obvious danger or, like, you know, about to get shivved just because we were running pell-mell. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. weapons out. But Ichabod and I have both been there, so I assume we could find our way back. Yeah, you can find your way back, uh, no problem. That's not the issue. The issue is right now, the city is under attack by a giant fucking dragon. So people who, like, people are running away in terror. People are out there, like, looting and, um, and, and doing a, a little bit of, uh, crime as well while in the middle. Like, you, as you ran here, you saw people running pell-mell to and fro all over the place. So I'm just wondering to know, are you, like, we doing weapons out, running at full speed? Are you trying to avoid the, the main streets? Um, which some of them are in also, you know, being damaged right now. Ichabod. Yes? How long does it take you to summon Salvatore? Uh, it takes me ten minutes, but I do not have a spell prepared at this time. Never mind, uh, then. I, I could, uh, if you have Pymorpha ready, uh, Corrin, uh, I can... We can uh, get to at least three people flying, and uh, someone can be big enough to carry the fourth. I was going to say, if we could... I do have Polymorph. If someone could become a flying creature, then they could simply uh, fly over to the boy and pick him up on their back and come back. Well, that would... yeah. The assumption that he'll just come straight with you. Well, we could... Polymorph lasts for an hour, depending on concentration. Well, I could also, uh, I could just wild shape and fly me and uh, Ichabod over to where uh, his son is. As long as you have enough room to carry another person. Ah, uh, I can probably, uh, I can, uh, when I get there, I can polymorph into something bigger. So, I don't think it should be much of a problem. Sure. But, uh, that'd also be leaving you guys here, and I don't know if you guys want to, you know... Together is gonna is gonna help us here. If there's danger in the city, but nonetheless there. we do need to keep moving. Let's go yeah. then. Okay. Okay. So, who's doing what? <laughs> um, I, I'm fine. I'm kind of fine with running, like just running there. Um, sure. but if you want to fly, if you think it'd be that much faster, then sure. I mean, I feel like we should faster. probably keep a low profile though too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah running I mean, everybody's fine. running everywhere. Let's just look dangerous so that people don't <laughs> rob us um, and and run over there. I could be yeah. a T-Rex. I was really... I was really intimidatingly intimidatingly am I, am I wrong? flight when it was only mm -hmm. going to be two people and you were attempting speed. But since it's all of us, no, we should simply yeah, no, move on the ground. If it's all four of us, then. Um, I'll, I'll let um, Lapis lead if she wants to, because I know she's a little faster. Yep, but she does is. does she know the way? She uh, does well, not know guiding. the way. But well, we're guiding. Yeah, the four of you can go together, oh. Lapis in the lead, um, the two of you guiding, and, and Blaze, you're taking up the rear to get there? Sure. Okay, sounds like a plan. So, no. leaving Prudence's house, you do start making your way into the center of one of the main streets that lead in the direction you're all trying to get to. Um, the f people, it is pandemonium right now. People are screaming, running in terror. Um, there's debris all over the place. Like, there's dust flying everywhere. It's actually, like, getting a little bit overcast from all the dust that's currently hanging over the city. Um, it doesn't cause difficult terrain, but it, it does make um, vision a little bit choppy. Now, what the first thing I need for um, your group is to roll a D100 for me. I attempt to hug one of the pandas. <laughs> the pandemonium. We got a 42. Okay, 42. Um, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Good yep. thing. So as you start... You start running um, down the streets. Um, go ahead, and um, we're going to be doing a group skill check for this. I'm going to need a perception check, a survival check, and um, the third check, you can either be 
using as a stealth check to try to keep hidden. You can use an intimidation check to try to keep people away, like kind of what Ichabod was saying. Um, it's entirely up to you. Third roll, up to you. Investigation. Um, yeah. I've, if you, I've got a plus eight. Least crowded route. I, I would take perception. Okay. Right. Okay. Who's got the highest survival? Hey, me. <laughs> Blaze near. What's your perception and what's your survival? My perception is thirteen. My survival is seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You my got survival, the best of both. My survival is <laughs> only a two. Uh, I'll Mine's do. A three. Um. Well, it looks like Lapis has the highest with a five. Oh yeah. Did she? Oh, she left. Yeah, she had to step away to go pick okay, up the so kids. Okay. So Lapis will do the survival. Blazer will do the perception. Um, and then, and then what's, we can. What's your intimidate? Plus eight. Okay, I've got plus nine on investigation. Okay. So I'll right. do that. Well, I can also add a D8 if I were to not do great. And you, you can die. save your superiority die. Yeah. All I right. I, guess I got so. a 26 I on investigation, boss. Okay. Oh, 17. Uh, you get guidance, Ichabod, if you're rolling anything, or whoever else. Give it to Lapis. It, it'd be It'll Lapis. Die. Yep. Lapis well, gets Lapis is also going guidance. to be able to roll her survival at advantage because of the Wanderer trait that she has from her background. She knows exactly, uh, well, she knows the city pretty damn well. She's been traveling mm -hmm. through here quite a bit, so that's going to help her out. So everybody's doing all this work, mm -hmm. and I'm like running along. Yeah, I'm this clenched with a grimace on my face. Uh, well, give I mean, give me your intimidation good. check anyway. I just want to see all what right, it is. It. It's just like Star Trek when the captain is out of sorts, yeah. the first officer takes over temporarily. I got a, yeah, I got a 16 intimidation. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I do have something I want to do. But okay. You can describe stuff. Okay. Well, no. Tell, yeah, go ahead. Tell, tell me what it is All you're right. doing. So as as we're traveling along, uh, Ichabod, it, he looks very angry. Like I'm clenching my weapons really hard, trying to. And I mean, I'm looking mean. I'm not trying hard to look mean. I'm just mad. Um, and then I just stop, and like all the tension just relieves from my body, and I just start laughing. Like I've just heard the funniest joke ever. Like, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I start belly laughing. And I look at everybody, and I go, I've just had a revelation! Are you insane? Uh, yeah. Sorry, that was a bit yes. forward. <laughs> but yes, I, 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 I mean, I sure he's am. a part of this party, so of course he's insane. We all oh, are. Fair. Yeah, Listen, no, don't y'all understand? An hour ago, there wasn't a chance in hell my family would come back to Cold Trash with us. But I prayed for a sign, I begged for something to show for all my sacrifice, and lo and behold, a dragon appears, smiting this town to ruins, and now there is a chance in hell. And as you say that, you just hear that dragon roar from somewhere in the distance. <laughs> Don't you see? Bowers is with me! Your he answered my prayer! Your god has just destroyed a city. Yeah, it's a damn city, though. Yeah, okay. What? I'm light as a feather. I feel like I can sing. <laughs> yeah, and, and as you're running down the streets, Ichabod being really intimidating and boisterous with his song, um, Lap <laughs> Lapis keeping a clever watch on the trail, um, keeping you from any large groups that um, seem to be doing looting. Corin, um, you help out with your investigation and uh, Blazenear with his perception, keeping yourselves away from much of the larger groups. Um, now, I do want you to go ahead and roll me a d12 and a d8, somebody. I'll get well, a d12. Roll a d8. Oh, I got a four. I got a three. Okay. Lucky number Rub seven. It. Yep. Okay. So as you're all kind of um, making your way down the city streets, something you, you turn a corner and something does come up in front of you. You see about half a dozen individuals or so um, who are actually like breaking through into um, houses. Um, you're hearing crashes. You're, you're hearing a little bit of screams. And it sounds like there's quite a bit of looting 
going on to, in, to, uh, in a house to your um, south. Hmm. Uh, my, my son is a, a thief in the guild. I wonder if it could possibly be them partaking in this looting. Well, do your spell thing if you think sure. we're close. Sure, I'll cast uh, locate object. Okay. You cast locate object. You're about half. You're you're about halfway between where um, b between Prudence's house and the the bunk house. Um, your spell is cast. Your senses go outward, but you do not sense that um scale anywhere. Well, there's always the chance he just didn't take it. So, I, I, yeah. I, I would like to keep heading on, but if y'all think it's worth investigating. I mean, they're just looters. Um, can we can we head towards the bunkhouse in such a way I might catch a glimpse of these people? Because I know what Ishmael's crew looks like. Um, you, you are going in that direction, so you can, um, as if you're just going to run by and glance that direction, you certainly can. Go yeah, ahead. And... I want to take a look um, to see if maybe I recognize anyone from his crew. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check. Sure. That's a five. Um, so much uh, debris in the air. Yeah, there's <laughs> there is so much debris. You glance that way, but like other, there is a, a an open door that and the curtains rip down from it, just leaving it open. the The window is shuttered, so you can't see anything in there. And all you see really is a shadow move somewhere at the, towards the back of the house. But you do hear another softer scream as well. I look at Blaze near. Like a, a scream like someone's hurt? You or said? like, ah, oh, there's people in my house. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, like I said, you heard a scream. Oh, well, uh, it's not... You know what? Uh, I'm actually quite curious now that I heard a scream. Um, uh, Alright, make it quick. The gods are telling me to go in there, so... <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Alright, uh... Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, do I have that spell prepared? No, of course I don't. Why are you going to wow. cast a spell before you even make a perception check? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I was just going to walk in. <laughs> <laughs> Look in there. Okay, yeah, perception check, 32. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, like, you were, you were running behind Ichabod. You looked over as well. You see that there's a very large, uh, burly, short squat man, probably a dwarf. Um, with a cudgel in his hand that was um, throwing over a uh, table, and there is a uh, human woman that was hiding underneath it who screamed and got up and started running the opposite direction towards the back of the house. Okay. Uh, are uh, there any teens? Do you see any teens in there? Uh, I cast hold person on that person uh, about to bludgeon. Okay. Um, what? It, so you're stopping and you're casting oh, no. hold person. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the... What do I need to roll? Wisdom, wisdom save of 17. Wow, I rolled Whoa. a nat 19. Whoa. <laughs> uh, sorry, sir. Not, I don't want to bother wow. you. Clearly you've got so, bodies here. Yeah, he, he... Like, you cast the spell, and he feels the effects, and he turns back and and looks at you, Blaze near. Uh, terribly sorry. I just, uh... Saw you were about to hurt someone, so I decided, you know, maybe don't do that. <laughs> just, just take the things, all right? Just take the things. You don't need to hurt anybody. Um, make me a persuasion check as you're all saying this. All right. Can he does... make it with advantage? Yeah. yeah. Does, uh, Why not? Uh, persuasion twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. The oh, yeah. the the dwarf he he's a, he's a very much an older man now that you're looking at him long oh, long beard uh, wrinkled face and uh, a lot of rotting teeth who just kind of sneers at you and he, he's gonna turn and and start gra like walk back further into the the house clearly going to to continue to rob it sure all right blaze near don't be a hero let's go. Well, I don't want anyone to get hurt. People are dying, probably by the tens every minute. Let's go. But yeah. if I can stop someone from getting hurt, 
Matt, and I don't do that. <laughs> what skill do I need to guesstimate the amount of people in this city? I'm not looking for an who exact number here. are currently dying. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not going to make you roll for that. You, you've seen okay. at least enough of the city. It's pretty fucking big. There's probably a good... Um, actually, you know what? I have a, a thing that says how much it is, so I'll just look. Oh, no. Awesome. Oh, can we say we're moving while this is happening? Yeah. Um, uh, if you're, if you're yeah. leaving, if you're leaving hey. the, the guy there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, can yeah. I, I play, I, I'm... I'm just gonna say to Blazenear, Blazenear, there's an average of blankety blank people <laughs> in this Prob city. Probably what around 30,000 or more. Wow. There's an average of 30,000 or more people in this city. Approximately 85% of them are probably currently in some sort of distress. We cannot but that one, help but that them one. all. We can't help them all, but we can help the one in front of us. Yeah, the we can help the one in front of us who's becomes my son. And becomes the many. <laughs> can, I, can I at least make an insight check to you know, see if my words got through. Yeah, go for it. Make an insight check. Roll the 27, right. I would assume. 14. Yeah, uh, it, it, like, you, you stay there for another minute as your friends, yeah, like, a minute. Run, what, like, another <laughs> moment, another moment, <laughs> while Just your friends are, there. like, they, they kind of walk forward a little bit, they stop, they're calling to you, you glance back, um, you see the, the woman that was crouched in, and, uh, screaming she has not made it outside the building is current and is like running down the alleyway and you, you can your guess that the guy that is in there is probably more interested in stealing things than he is hurting people all right well all right as long as no one's getting hurt it, for the moment at least yeah not where i can see him Let's go. <laughs> well, you never know, but uh, you continue on ignoring the, the looting and pillaging that's going on around you and start getting close. Now, because you had already cast the spell, you, you pick up speed and you, you're running really super fast. Mm -hmm. um, make me another D12 and a D8. Alright, D8 is a 4 again. Someone else can roll that 12. Oh, okay. Four. Nice. <laughs> on the same wavelength. Yeah, you're on the same wavelength. You're continuing to run as fast as you can. The dust is getting heavier now, and it's a lot more like running through fog. The, and you all are like having to, to like pull your um your clothes up over your face to um protect it from the the dust that's that's starting to pick up now. Um, you are now considered uh, partially obscured, and uh, so is pretty much everyone around you. Like a as you're running, you'll see somebody just come running out of the fog in like twos or threes, uh, hands held um, together, running in the opposite direction. They almost they almost hit you, but then they see you're fully armed, and they kind of yell and scream and, and run the opposite direction. It's freaking chaos out here. By the t within about 10 minutes time, um, just as your spell is like got maybe a minute or two left, you reach the edge of the area w um, of the bunkhouse. And as you get close within a thousand feet of it, you feel that that scale is still in the bunkhouse. The closer you get, the more the more it seems like it. The more you can feel it right there, and eventually, as, as you you just keep running, you get right in front of the bunkhouse and stop just as the spell ends. And it seems like like how close. Like let me read it real quick. Because let's see, you can sense the um, direction of the object's location as long as the object's within 100 feet. If it moves, you know its direction of its movement, which it has not moved at all. Um, it can locate a specific object known as long as within 30 feet. Yeah, you can get up to about 30 feet, and as you get closer to the bunkhouse, it's you can sense it's basically in the same room that um, that you had met with um, your son and his handler. You probably just left it there. That hurts. Um, I'm so I'm gonna go inside and and go in the room anyway. Okay, stepping inside the bunkhouse, um, you you do just as dust kind of starts falling down um, as the building shakes from another explosion. 
you look around and at first you don't see anybody in there. You just see the desk, um, the small room with two doors going to the north and to the east, and um, the bench. But as you get closer to the desk, you can see cowering underneath it is that bald human man with, with the white beard who's uh, using the desk for um, cover. I, I laugh and then I'm going to go in the room. <laughs> Okay. Well, you um, immediately go heading off into that room. Um, you push through the door, and you you find it to be empty. Um, no one is in there. Um, your spell has ended by this point. Go ahead and make an investigation if you're wanting to look for the, the scale. Oh, so it's not I'm just going to ask the, the guy. What's that? I'm going to ask the guy. Be like, where's the stun? You, you're going... Well, hold on. Ichabod, uh, go ahead. I said it's, it's not just sitting on the table. It is not just sitting on the table. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> my rolls are it's awful. <laughs> hey, I still have this uh, inspiration from last time because I didn't fail a single check after I got it. <laughs> Can I use that? Yeah, I'll allow it. Go for okay. it. It's probably still going to be bad, but we'll try. Um, investigation because I would get a plus zero. It's worse! <laughs> Ouchie! <laughs> Ouchie! You, you know you sensed it in that room, but like as you just stand at the at, at the corner and, and look around and scan, you kind of walk around, you look on the table, you look underneath it, it's nowhere to be found. I start kicking chairs. <laughs> you just start kicking chairs. <laughs> it goes flying around and just God smashes. Damn it. Shit, fuck. Um, so Corin... You you um you you entered into the building as well, and you wanted to talk to the guy cowering down there. Mm -hmm. Where is the sun? Um, he kind of peeks his head up and and looks around. And says, "I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him since y'all left." Where did he go? I didn't see him leave anywhere. I saw you all leave. I stayed right here. I didn't go anywhere else. He didn't come through the door or anything like that. Is this is this the only door to and fro this place? He says, "No, nah, the the rest of the of the bunkhouse is through that door." And he points to this one here to the to the north. So there's another way he could have he could have left. Follow the trail, I suppose. Uh, I, I wasn't able to find that scale, and I don't know if it's worth wasting another spell on it. I mean, uh, one of us could look. Uh, let's just go through the door then, I suppose. Well, if you want to take a look, Blazinger, I won't stop you. I mean, I'm not, I'm good with, like, uh, scanning rooms. I'm not good mm -hmm. with, uh, picking stuff up, you know, looking over everything sure. neither am i neither am i <laughs> i'm okay investigation 21 you go in and there's a bunch of broken chairs <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if you if you go into that room that ichabod had just left there's broken chairs littering the entire place um I'm sorry, the, the table's outwards. been flipped over and all that um you scan around and, and look around the room with, and with your 21 investigation it doesn't take you long to find it it's sitting on the bookshelf um kind of tucked in between a couple books it it, it, it it you needed to roll a 10 to find it <laughs> just couldn't do that yeah yeah um but uh the gods do seem to be looking down on you with favor ichabod you do have advantage on your next roll yeah thank you i'll try to make it something important um so all right well let's search around this bunkhouse Corn if anything will look maybe slightly. we can find his handler Corrin will you know, look slightly miffed as he hands the scale back to Ichabod. Here is your gift back. <laughs> oh, Corrin, I, I wasn't meaning to get rid of it. I do. I like it a lot, and that's why I thought it would make a good gift for Ishmael. Also, he was using it to track I, the kid, probably. I so. put it back in my hat. Uh, <laughs> to make Corrin uh, happy. I suppose Ichabod. it's my fault. I never told you I was the one who gave it to you in the first place. Mm -hmm. it, Ichabod, if you have something that smells like the your kid... uh can turn into a wolf. <laughs> I'm looking at the, uh, the wolf uh, sheet right I, now. I, I, I tried to plant them. something on him. I didn't exactly take anything off him. 
Did he oh. touch it? Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I think he just stared at it. Um, I can, because it says if you've been up close to it within 30 feet, and Ishmael wanted to show off his cool dagger tricks, so I could try <laughs> to track his dagger. That, yeah, sure. Use up another spell slot, but... It's true, but should we just check this bunkhouse first and then try that? Sure. Okay, let's check. We're gonna search around. Okay, you start you start heading into the bunkhouse itself. Um, passing through the door, you find a long corridor, one with a door going to the west, um, another going to the east, and three more down the the L of the of the hallway. There's three more doors. Yikes. Oh. Well, this one, we there's a second door, so yeah, that... I know this goes back into that room. Mm-hmm. I'll check the next door. Kick this bad boy open. Anybody in there? You, you walk up to that door, just straight up kick it. And the moment you do, you hear the house shake again. <laughs> um... Like, the turn. building shakes itself, uh, dust comes tumbling down, and you feel the force of a large explosion somewhere nearby. Um, probably another dragon blast. The The door that you opened, um, you find a small office inside of it. There's a desk, uh, a bookshelf, and a couple chairs. There's uh, also all the drawers have been pulled open. You can tell just from where you're standing. Does it seem like somebody was grabbing stuff to run? Um, if, if you walk over there and, and look, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. I will perceive. Mm -mm. Uh, guidance. <laughs> shoot me, shoot me. Doesn't help, but, you know. Can I, do I have to use that advantage on this roll, or can I choose? Because I don't really care about this that much. <laughs> um, well, it does say for the next roll... And I don't but perceive. but <laughs> but I'm gonna I'll allow you to not use it for okay, this one. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, most likely somebody's just running yeah. off or somebody's stealing info. Yep. And either way, I don't give. I don't um, give a damn. Yeah. Um. You, um. You did have the guidance roll, but I, I'll just let you know that as you walked over there and looked, as far as you can tell, like everything, things have been rummaged around. There's um. There's not a lot of stuff in there, and like it all looks pell mell. Like someone definitely rummaged through there looking for stuff to steal. Okay. But if you're not you in. They got stolen. Do you think anything that your kid has uh, is magical? I don't know. Okay, I didn't. I, I don't know how much you know about the kid. So Listen, I ain't seen him in three years. Be, regardless, tracking the dagger is tracking the dagger. So. <laughs> yeah. Really. Um, I I ch checking just this other door. Effect. I'm checking every every door, but I just want to glance around for people. And if there's no people yeah. in there, I'm moving okay. on. Okay. Okay. Well, walking over, and you kick over the next door, and it's just a small library. Um, there is nobody in there. The door to the, to the the west that you're standing in front of leads to the kitchen. And here you can also see that there's quite a bit of stuff that's like just been thrown everywhere. Um, there's uh, broken uh, food stuffs on the ground. Um, it looks like someone's rummaged through here. Lacenir, do you have thaumaturgy? Uh, no. I have the uh, present dissertation one. Right. Well, just call out for him then. Ishmael! <laughs> <laughs> I think Ichabod has the better set of It's lines. like Heavy Rain. What's yeah. his name in Heavy Rain? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, A niche reference for all you. If you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yell out Ishmael's name a as you're walking towards the, the last door, which leads to um, another room that has a desk in front of it with um, a big heavy book on, on the top of it and a stairs leading up to the second floor. Second floor don't seem like a wise place to be. It's a big, a big heavy book there, you say? There is a big heavy book. Um, it's... Um, Written in a very odd sort of language that you don't really recognize. None of my business. <laughs> Written thieves can't. It, that's a reasonable guess, or yeah. at least in some type of code similar to it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna cast locate object on Ishmael's cool dagger. Okay. You cast a spell on um, 
looking for specifically oh uh hold on blood from a stone says i think the kid's name in heavy rain was jason and every time you press the button he would say it different so he'd be like jason 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 like and it's so funny okay um casting the spell you do locate the the dagger it's upstairs on the second floor i run up the stairs you immediately go running up the stairs, um, upstairs, taking, upstairs. <laughs> taking two at a time, and you go, you find yourself in a long hallway with bunch of doors. Each most of them are open, and you glance in, and, and each one is just a room with a bunch of bunk beds all through it. Um, you can sense that the dagger is towards the back of the bunkhouse, and as you go running through, you come to a door that is closed. And you can sense that that dagger is on the other side of it. Okay. I take a deep breath and I turn the handle. Well, I wait I wait to see my friends down the hall and then I turn the handle. Okay, yeah. Um, I assume everybody comes running upstairs following um, yeah. Ichabod. Sure. Okay. As you, as you do, you step you open the door and to and look inside and the, as the door opens, you can hear like whispered voices um arguing a little bit they seem to be in in deep conversation and it, you, like this is the first time you haven't just kicked down a freaking door so yeah. you're opening it slowly and you see there huddled in towards the back is a group of uh six individuals <laughs> one of whom is uh wearing the cloak that your son was wearing not too long ago but is it his son Yes, it's his son. Okay. okay. Sorry, five. Just checking. <laughs> you do it's see his son. You also see um, the tabaxi handler there, as well as like you're you, you can you're scanning around. You can you can see all of them have hoods um, uh, and on and cloaks, but you do recognize there is a Grayford tabaxi, a um, a human female with red hair. A, um, a, a gray-skinned tiefling with ram horns, and a youngish-looking dwarf with a big, brown, bushy beard. It's a whole crew. Uh, okay, I step in the, in the door um, and present myself. I'm going to look at them all. Um, it's, I yeah. guess it's good to finally meet, meet y'all. Um, Ishmael, we have to go. Ishmael, like, the moment you say his name, just looks at you with big eyes. Um, we have, uh, we have a, a group rating with uh, seven people. Welcome! Hello. Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're in the middle of a uh, giant legendary fucking dragon attacking a city. And our heroes are trying to convince uh, one of their sons uh, to leave. Yeah. One. So um, Ishmael, like, he looks up at you, father, and he's like, father, father, you're, what, what are you doing here? Come to yeah. take you somewhere safe. Uh, we've got a way to get out of here. Buddy here, Corin, knows teleportation, and your, your mom is already coming, and your little brother, Fear Not's coming. We just need you. You, he, he, he looks like stunned for a moment, and like his, his mouth just kind of goes open, and in that moment, um, the tabaxi handler, um, he, he takes the initiative, he says, you, you say you have uh, a, a way out of the city. Yep. We don't have room for everybody. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'm not <laughs> talking to you. I'm talking to Ishmael here. Come on, son. We need to go. We don't have time to discuss it. Ishmael hears you say that, and his immediate response is, I'm not going anywhere without my friends. And he crosses his arms. Matt. Yes. Would I know any of, like, the the obvious, like, major tenets of Balrus that relates to, like, being kind to one's neighbor or, like, 
love a stranger as yourself. Oh, like, you not the obscure shit, religion. just the stuff that, like, everybody would know. So here's my, my question, because uh, up until recently, you had no real contact with the gods or, or dealing with them at all. And you've only recently started... Um, starting pursuing pursuing interest in the five gods how much time have you devoted to actually reading up on the the tenets of the five i mean i do have uh at least a passing knowledge simply because i'm schooled in history and so i would have studied like the effect that the religions would have had over time then i would say you at least know some of the basic ...ness of it. Um, if you if you want to know any any more specifics, you can go ahead and roll a religion check. No, it's it's literally just to look at Ichabod and spout off. You know, Balrus says, "Love, you know, non harmful strangers as your own family." Yada da yada da. Everybody's coming with, and we're gonna go. I look at Corin and I say, "How many people do you think you can transport with that spell of yours?" As many as can run through in six seconds. So actually, quite a bit. Is that yeah. how is that how teleportation works? Teleportation that is circle, how yeah. This spell works. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was going based on my knowledge of my player knowledge of teleportation, which yeah. is like eight people or something. Um, yeah. This this is literally just you've got a very short amount of time, and everybody who runs right. through it you can know. get through. Yeah. So yeah. it it creates a literally a portal, a circle on the ground that anybody can run through, and as many people as in six seconds can do it. So you can reasonably get like in theory twenty, thirty people through it in that six seconds if they're all ready to go. You know. Yep. So I'll just look at the so rest of the group you. and say, keep your heads down, keep your weapons sheathed, don't try and cause any trouble along the way. Let's go. Okay, so what I want for you is, since you're the one leading this, corn, make me a persuasion check with advantage. Sure. Guidance. Okay, let me roll that d4. 16. 16. Um, you, you see Tenenbaum, the, the naked tabaxi, um motion to to the other five and they all kind of huddle together and they kind of talk for for a moment you, you can hear whispers but um you definitely can't hear what they're or, or at least uh most of you wouldn't be able to hear what they're saying blazner i think has a really high passive perception but even he it's all like clicks and whistles and a little bit of hand motion so you don't know what they're saying now just to be clear the cat is just hairless not actually nude right yeah no he's just a a, a hairless uh tabaxi okay because if he was nude i was gonna get him some clothing first no 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 he, he's he's wearing uh you know leather uh, studded leather armor he's got a cloak on he's he's dressed he's That's just a yeah it's just yeah. the way you said it <laughs> yeah he's like one of the sphinx cats yes i know what those are yeah but um they they, they sit there and huddle for about 10 10 seconds or so, until finally uh, Tenenbaum says, Very well, we will go with you. Awesome. Cool. Let us make haste. You see all of them grab up sacks. They had sacks um, literally next to them. They, um, Ichabod, or Ishmael actually has two, and he slings them both over his uh, shoulders as well as a saddlebag. And all of them grab sacks and, and some uh, backpacks and things like that. Like, they're getting ready to bug out. Mm -hmm. If you if you all stayed and, and fucked with the looters at all, you would have missed them. No. Yeah, I got I got no problem with everybody coming along. I just didn't think we had the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And I will look at all of them just before we leave, and I will say, I require no payment for these services, save that you cause no trouble at our new destination. Agreed? True. Coltrass ain't gonna put up with this behavior. They all they they all nod and, and Tenenbaum says, You say you said we're we're going to Coltrast. Yes. That's true. And Radagast. Yes. That's true. Mm, uh, they they sh he shrugs and says, a anywhere is better than here. Yep. So as soon <laughs> as they grab their stuff, no we're gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well they can go they can complain if they want, they can also be left behind. So <laughs> Yeah, like, absolutely. This is, this is our one destination. I'm letting you come if you want. Make a choice. Yeah, and they're all choosing to, to go because it's a better option than trying to get out of the city right now. Yep, so, so we'll go back. Okay. You go rushing out of the bunkhouse now with uh, quite a few people in tow. And as you do, you hear that another loud roar. 
as the black shadow of the legendary dragon goes flying overhead, another uh, unleash of that um, blazing force energy just explodes down into the city. I need everyone to make me a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, I'm dragons, best dragons. Um, I want to be, I want to be near to Ishmael, um, because I was definitely running next to him so he can be in my aura. Eighteen. I only got a five, but Ishmael gets plus four. I did not mean to do advantage, but it didn't matter. I got twenty either way. <laughs> I'm very dexterous, y'all. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, I wasn't worried. <laughs> well, I know you weren't worried. Very dexterous, you got a five. Yeah, I'm very dexterous. He's just so dexterous, you know? No, it's it, like, my legs are broken, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it would be higher with uh, Ichabod's bonus. Uh, yeah, technically it would Everyone be. within ten feet. Um, yeah, if it's anyone within ten feet, and they're all, you're all, everyone's kind of clustered together as you're all running. Um, I imagine, Ichabod, if you're trying to stay near Ishmael, um, you're more in the middle, so everyone is getting these effects, and those Hell plus yeah. fives are helping out a lot. Um, especially with, like, like the dwarf kid is, is kind of slow, um... The human wasn't doing too much better, the redhead chick, um, but those fives are, are helping out. So together, you all manage to keep your feet, though some of them like stumble a bit and have to catch themselves, um, as just wind of concussive force comes blowing past you all. You don't take any damage from this, but you're hit with dust and sand and gravel and uh, bit, like like uh, um, splinters and things like that. And you can tell the dragon is not letting up. He is furious. Of course, you all know the reason why he's furious, so it makes sense to you. But to everyone else, like um, Ishmael and his friends, and even Tenenbaum, the, the naked cat tabaxi, they are all looking terrified. They have no clue why a giant dragon showed up and is ravaging their city. I wanna, I wanna lean over to Ishmael and go, <laughs> "Hey, buddy, you know that's your boss, right?" And I point, I point up to this guy. That just makes uh, him look cooler. Yeah, Ishmael well, just he's cool. Okay. Ishmael just gives you a weird look, like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I just, I just raise my eyebrows and nod. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know you don't believe me. Saeem is a dragon. He's pretended to be different people over his thousand, multiple thousands of years of life. <laughs> I, that, that's impossible. What are you talking about? The same can't be a dragon. And why not? Ten, well, Tenenbaum uh, says, "Try not to try not to judge too much, boy. We don't know what's going on. Where are we going anyway?" And he looks at the rest of you. Shut your mouth, Tenenbaum. Just follow to, us. To get his wife and child, and then we leave. Tenenbaum looks at you, Corny, and he says, Is the human always such a dick? Yes. Only He's to, emotional only right to now. Only to scumbags like you. <laughs> uh, we're, we're all like that. All, all humans. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Just a personality trait? Yeah, you sounds better, about right. You better get used to it. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell that uh, Tenenbaum and the, all the thieves' kids are holding their tongue right now, just because you know it, like it probably better too. <laughs> but uh, you all continue to run. Um, go ahead and roll for me another D twelve and a D eight. Here, D eight's a two. The D twelve, eight. Okay. As you're running, um, you come across a group um, that is literally pulling shit out of a house. Um, most of them are there's a mostly human. There's a, a couple, at least one tiefling and a dwarf, and they're like pulling furniture and stuff out of a house and seem to be um, going through everything. Um, your group comes up and stops. And they look up at you, and it, at least uh, the tiefling pulls a weapon out, and he's like, you gonna be in any trouble? We're leaving. 
I'm just gonna run right past him. Right. My opinion is that everyone who lives in this city knows of the existence of the Thieves Guild and therefore has accepted that, hey, if shit hits the fan, this might happen. No, that's that's a fair assumption. You wa you all watch Corrin just keep running. Are you are you all following? Well, it looks like you're making enough problems for yourself. And I'll just okay. keep going. If we don't see any people being victimized, like being yeah. hurt or anything, I'm not going to stop people from stealing objects. Okay, fair enough. Well, you uh, you just run past, and they they watch you a as you go by, um, looking for signs like you're about to attack. But if you you leave them alone, they're not gonna yep. gonna fight you. They're just gonna keep doing what they're doing, which is looting the city. Which is yeah, what am yeah. I a cop? Yeah, I'm not a cop. Yeah, that, that's reasonable. This is the the city of thieves, so mm -hmm. sure, absolutely. Making your way past, you do eventually get to Prudence Street. You go running back. I, I imagine just ignoring the um, the door once again, like you have pretty much every single time. And there you find inside Prudence and Fear Not standing there next to the pink skinned tiefling, who is the MC. And uh, you 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 hear Prudence saying, "Are, are you sure that she's?" Are you sure they're going to find him? Is he going to be all right? And Mavesies is uh, just reassuring her as, as best as he can as you all walk in. Now, of course, that, that commotion stops their conversation. And they look and they see you. And then they see Ishmael. And Prudence immediately pushes past Mavesies And goes running up to her son and just hugs him. To, and hugs his... Her, his uh, head to her chest, and um, y you hear Ishmael like, "Mother, it's going to be okay. Uh, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not. Go not going to let anything happen to you." And they spend a few minutes reassuring each other, and finally, d while this is going on, Mavesies, uh, the who is the Tiefling. I, I guess you guys don't know his name yet, but anyway, the Tiefling comes over and and walks over to you, Corey. And his hand's kind of on his, that uh, that rod in his belt, and he says, "Well done. I'm surprised that you're able to to get him up, get him to come. He hasn't been uh, coming around lately. So well, what do what do we need to do? A hazardous situation like this can often change one mind. Right. I need one minute. Protect me for that one minute. Anyone tries to disrupt what I'm doing, stop them. Yeah." I'm going to cast a fire elemental outside the building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was told to protect him. I'm going to do that. I mean, you don't have to be that obvious about it. Well, uh, nah, shit. I mean, he just goes <laughs> over to the door and starts casting his... Uh, what, what's the component for that, by the way? Uh, it's like a... It's pretty much just a golden jar of a uh, big expensive of... thing that the spell doesn't consume but it's yeah. really weird yeah. to get yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you hold that weird stupid thing out that you spent money on um, casting your spell and a flaming okay. elemental just comes into being there in the sandy ground in front of the house and, and there's still people like running every so often but this area has been at least kind of cleared out so probably for the last uh, five minutes or so of uh, your journey nobody's been around and basically, I'm just going to say to everyone assembled, once this spell completes, you will have six seconds to run through the circle. Anyone who does not will be left behind. Uh, Tenenbaum nods his head at, at, as you say this and says, don't worry, we're, we'll, don't worry, we'll be ready. And he, he seems like he's uh, taking charge of the, the thief kids and, and telling them to arrange themselves around the room, getting ready to go through. Yeah, I'm popping that up into chats just so that that way the folks at home can see what the mm. spell is. Uh, Blood from the Stone is saying uh, a fire elemental, huh? Yeah, that's not going to add any chaos to the city after you leave. <laughs> He, no, he's going to come through in the six seconds. I was less rest. worried about the fire elemental adding chaos and more about the fire elemental being obvious that, hey, there's something weird going on mm -hmm. down there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. P.S. I am drawing my stuff and casting my spell. Okay. 60 seconds. 
So yeah, you take one minute um, to sit down and start uh, forging this uh, this circle using that magical chalk that you have. So go ahead and take one use of that off of your character sheet. Yep. You begin. You're you're drawing your circle as you do. The fire elemental kind of just circles around the building outside. Uh, Prudence and Fear Not go and stand next to the, the tiefling um, who's standing on the edge, basically opposite of wherever Ichabod stands. The the um, I'm just looking at them. <laughs> yeah, you're just looking at them. They, they seem very comfortable um, staying behind Mavesies. Um, I, actually, I would like to. I keep, I keep saying his name because his name's right there on my yeah. my thing. But you, you guys, say, know, I feel yeah. like she's probably said it at least once or something. Yeah, she's had to have said it at least yeah. once. But yeah, what, what are you wanting to do while Corrin's doing... I, I want to walk over to Fear Not and like get down on my knee, you know, and grab his shoulders and say, listen, it's all right, we're going to go somewhere safe and sound. I've got connections in Coltrass, we can get you a nice new house, um, and everything's going to be a-okay. Um, as, as you do that, um, what's your passive perception? Oh, you know. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, you know. I, like, I really 12, uh, 13, you know. 13. 13? He's better than 12. Yeah, um, I mean, 13 isn't too bad. You do notice, like, you're you're kneeling down in front of him, have your hands on the boy's mm -hmm. shoulder, and, and you're saying this, but in the corner of your eye, you do also notice uh, Prudence was um, came up and was standing behind him, and you can see, like, her fist is clenched a little mm -hmm. bit when as you uh, put your hands on the boy's shoulders. Um mm -hmm. Mavesies uh, just stands a little bit behind, and he's very, very watchful. You can tell all that with the 13. Yeah. I stand up, and I, I look at Prue, and I go, Don't worry, Prue, I ain't going to cause any problems, all right? I just want my sons to be where I can see them. Now, I am his paraphernalias. Mm -hmm. And go I am his paraphernalias. <laughs> so, this, this guy might have replaced me as a man in your life, but ain't nobody going to replace me as a father to my children. Uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check. Sure, that's going to go great. Oh, 15. Not 15. so bad. No, not bad at all. Oh, wait. I, I do get the advantage, so yeah. I want to keep pushing it off, so I'll just roll again. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to do that twice. <laughs> so no, 15 and 10. The 15's better. Yeah, 15's great, actually. Um... You, you say this, and her eyes narrow a little bit, and then finally, like, they, they kind of just loosen as though, you know, like, she's just accepting the fact of what's going on right now, and she says, I suppose we'll have to talk about this later, but we'll, find, we'll see what happens when, when we get to wherever it is you're, you're taking us. Where are you taking us anyway? We're going to Coltrast in, in Radagast. We kind of help to uh, re-establish the Baron there. Um, gives us a little bit of sway, and, and the town is safe. Bree, how loud are you speaking? Uh, at this volume that I'm currently speaking in. <laughs> <laughs> Corrin will just go, Concentrating! <laughs> yeah, you say that. Uh, very annoyed, but finally, you finish the circle, the spell is Don't cast... Yeah, the um the runic uh, symbols on the floor just flash with bright light, and everyone was waiting. So as quick as they can, six seconds later, everyone goes running through, and you appear in the teleportation room of Coltrast. I would like to have like waited till the end to make sure everybody got through. Okay, yeah, you can definitely have gone through and last. Then jump through at the last second. Yeah, um, I, I feel like Mavesy's probably waited till the at least until Prudence and and the boys got through, and he he, he does give you a wry look at, as I, he passes. Boy, don't give me even a second. You better get in there before I change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you're waiting until the end. That that leaves me such a prime opportunity. But as you can see, I am. Uh, practicing an immense amount of self-control, which is worth something. <laughs> so let's go. Probably. You all step through, and you find yourselves in a very cold stone room. Uh, there on, I think it was the third floor of Coltrast uh, Keep. The dragon is... You are safe from the dragon and out of Coltrast. For and for now, at least, I think this is a good place to take a break.
But you have safely made it out of Rowena and your home in Coltrast once again. And, um, I mean, the moment you all step through, you didn't alert anybody, so the alarms go off, <laughs> and the guards come running, and, of course, there's this big fucking conversation uh, uh, about it as they all think you're, like, invaders trying to kill the the, the keep. But we'll get... We'll get it's fine. You, you, you're able to get past that. And, but we'll uh, pick things up here in about uh, 10 minutes or so when we find out exactly what our heroes do now that they are home once again in the city of Coltrest. So Don't stay tuned. quotations around that. Heroes. Heroes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Howdy, everybody. We are back. And when we last left off, the debauchery circus had fled from Rowena. Now that Ichabod had gathered up all of his uh, family members, as well as quite a few others. Um, you all teleported into uh, Coltrast Keep uh, via Corrin's uh, teleportation circle spell, uh, uh, which I'm... I'm the moment you did, alarms just started going off, and guards came running up, uh, thinking they were under attack. It takes you a few moments to um, clear up all, everything, but uh, as uh, the heroes of Coltrast, uh, you do have free use of the teleportation circle. So they eventually, you know, let you know that, okay, fine, whatever. Um, they're very confused by the large amount of people that's now in there. Um, but... Uh, they, they do also inform you that uh, um, Lord Coltrast is in um, in the keep right now. He is currently uh, in his, in the library doing work, if you want to see him. Um, but apart from that, uh, the keep as well as the city is uh, yours. So as I put on some new music to represent that in the different place you're now in, what are you all wanting to do? Um, so... After we arrive and everybody's all safe, um, I walk over to Corin and I just give him a big hug. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Corin. You you really came through for us. I tried to do my best. Uh, it, it's appreciated. Well, look, we're back in the keep. Definitely not a fight happening here. Back in the keep. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's still like made up from our fight. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah there's my sword right here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Um. But yeah, um, you do event make it. You are now back in the keep. And uh, you, as you're hugging uh, Corin, um, you, you actually see uh, uh, Mavesies, the the MC, um, talking with Prudence. Uh, she seems t uh, concerned and, and whispering, and he, he's talking to her as well as you all uh, make your way down to the first floor of the keep. Yeah, I'll definitely um, be spending my time talking to my family to try to, I don't know, figure things out for them, but we can do other stuff first. I'll go uh, let Edmund know what's going on and see about who I need to talk to for temporary housing for these folks i figure either him or the leader of the church would be able to help me oh def um, I'll start with edmund since we're already here well um you make your way to the first floor of the keep and there you do find um edmund se seated at the table um one of the tables in the library um he he looks up and greets you all as you arrive and um he's he uh, immediately he wants to know so how oh, um welcome you're you're all back well welcome back it's it's been interesting it's been an interesting few weeks since since i saw you last um how, how did it go in rowena did you win the tournament uh they did indeed and yep. our other ventures were also profitable Oh yeah, uh, quite profitable. Um, I don't want to talk about this stuff though, with all the extra company. <laughs> yeah, you say that, and Edmund like looks past you all and and sees the large crowd um, ga mean, gathered in the 
in in the doorway there. They're all kind of looking around, staring at the keep, and um, just seem a, a little surprised in it and in, in awe of what they I was found. Gonna say I probably wouldn't have brought all of them to come meet Edmund with us. But yeah, well, I'll have them wait outside, I, and then yeah, we'll call for. I mean, it, like the. Right now, they're all kind of in the the central foyer of the keep, uh, just staring, looking around. But they did see where you went. Mm -hmm. um, I will definitely carve out some time to tell you of all of our adventures. Um, at the moment, Ichabod has brought his family with him, and some of his family had friends that they would not leave behind. All I am asking at this moment is... Uh, a temporary place for them to reside until they can decide what their next move is. Um, well, um certainly, Corin. Um, uh, I'd be happy to set them up here in in the keep if um, if you if you'd like. Or I wouldn't. Um... I wouldn't put. Uh, a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I not, would get them. We do not need anything so fancy. Merely just a place that they may rest their heads. Not that we brought any bad people back with us, uh, but my, my son was into some kind of a, a questionable business, uh, so I will advise you to keep an eye on a few of these folk. Hmm. Um, okay. Uh, Edmonds says, well, um, yes, there, there are plenty of houses in, in the city. We can uh, arrange housing for them all. Um, Excellent. Uh, I suppose depending on who wants to meet up with, to bunk up with whom, um, but uh, I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get the city planner to to see and, and see what's available. Do you, do you mind if I at least go out and, and meet them all? Yes, oh, you can. Sure. No, he can totally meet them. I just didn't want to like Talk secret secret meeting with <laughs> you know him about all, what all happened. I didn't want everybody there listening in. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, Edmund uh, take, takes your cue about not talking too much in detail and. He's a he's a fairly insightful young man, but you do watch as Edmund goes out and introduces himself to to everyone. You see the 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 thief kids uh, kind of look surprised at uh, seeing a kid uh, a little bit younger than them, um, the apparent lord of this place. Um, Prudence and Mavesies uh, also seem surprised, but Fear Not actually goes up because they're actually about the same age. I think. Yeah, I think Fear Not's a little younger. He's yeah. eleven. He's eleven. So yeah, mm -hmm. Edmund's thir um, put 14. like ab about fourteen now, and uh, so yeah, he's a little bit younger, and your other son's a little bit older, and uh, he he goes around and introduces himself to everyone and shakes their hand and um, kind of gives you all questioning looks as he's uh, introduced to everyone. Um, Mavesies uh, says. Uh, 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 we we appreciate you, uh, you we appreciate you st uh, allowing us to, to say in your city it was uh, well we we left from a very very dangerous situation and he begins telling from at least his perspective what mm -hmm. happened how uh, a, a gigantic dragon, dragon yeah attacked Rowena um, when when uh, Prudence and Fear Not and Ishmael are introduced. Uh, uh, Edmund's eyes kind of go wide because he, he knows who he's heard about all of them from you, Ichabod. And yeah, he I, seems I put my hands on my hips proudly as I introduce my sons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ishmael, Fear Not. And that's Prue. And mm -hmm. that's Prue's friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the the very flamboyant Mavesies comes up and gives a big bow and and kind of mm. talks about what he Roll used to eyes. do and um how he was the the MC for the tournament and he, he worked for the Zayim and all of that uh, um and, and you know uh, conversation eventually moves on you you're all brought into the library refreshments are given you you spend some time kind of talking a, a little bit about what they saw and that sort of thing. Um, Edmund talks a lot to Ishmael and, and Fear Not and the other um, kids his age. Um, and I imagine you all kind of keep a very weathered eye over those interactions because while while Edmund doesn't know who the hell these kids are, other than the fact that they're Ishmael's son, yeah. or Ichabod's sons, um, you all do. So, so there's a little bit of that. And Tenenbaum kind of 
keeps an eye as well, but he he doesn't make too much mention of uh, who he is other than just uh, um, he, he gives his name. Um, eventually, Bob, yeah. Problem. Eventually, uh, the the city planner does uh, is summoned and um, talks go to um, lodgings and that sort of thing. Um, okay. There are a few houses available right now. There's a uh, there's um, some here in the upper city there uh, as well as down in the lower city. Um, negotiations kind of go back and forth. Just to, tell me, like, yeah, I wanna, what are I you wanting? What, what are you wanting to do? Are you trying to influence this at all? Yeah, I want to. I want to be able to talk to Ishmael, Fear Not, Prue, and I guess Mavesies and and Edmund, mm -hmm. all um, all together. Oh. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say the only way that I'm actually influencing things is just to tell them, you know, the promise that you made with me about not causing trouble still stands. Edmund is the law of the land here. You can leave anytime you want, but as long as you're within the city, try and be helpful if you can. Um, I, I imagine you're saying this mostly to Tenenbaum than anyone else. Go ahead and make a persuasion yeah. check. Okay. Emphasis and, uh, on the you can leave part. Ten and guidance. <laughs> so that's a 19 plus 1 for a total of 20. And I will add at the end this town and the promise you made with me, they are one and the same. If you harm this town, I will consider it an affront and I will deal with you personally. Yeah, we're kind of protecting the town, so, you know. Um, Big yeah, absolutely. Well, um, good thing, uh, good thing Blazner's there to to help help out with this conversation as well. But uh, Tenenbaum, he, he does say, "Do not worry. Yeah, uh, and, and until we figure out what it is we are going to be doing, we will not cause trouble in 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 this town." Good. 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 Now, right. as far as like uh, living arrangements go, do you, are are you wanting uh, your family to to be uh, here in the upper city, um, closer to you, yeah. or do you um, want do you like how how much do you care about where they're going to be put up by Edmund oh, I, and his people? I care very much. Um, <laughs> I say, Prue, uh, fear not, Mavesy, Mav, Mav, whatever your name is, um, Mavesies. It, it's. It was my hope that you might choose to to stay in town for a while. Um, I've got a, a lot of money, to be honest, and uh, I was hoping I could buy you a house here so that my sons might be close to me. This is kind of where we come back after uh, missions. We stumbled into a little something bigger that I'm hoping to stick around and take care of, so I'm not heading back to Golfrin anytime soon, but it would be... a uh, a joy to me if I could come here and, and my sons were here too. Uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check. I will attempt so. Oh my god, it's so oh. awful. Every, <laughs> it's bad every time. It really um, is. And you have a f you have a four in it. It's not like I it's know. a horrible role. <laughs> but, um, and the Senate gave me inspiration, um, which I will use. I don't know if Blazner wants to throw a guidance for <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't think I was there, honestly. Yeah, so you're we're probably in the same room. I'm just kind of over by them. Yeah, I imagine probably Blazner's on the other side, but you you can go ahead and, and use your inspiration to, to I... reroll that. A thirteen. So as you're you're saying this, you you can see the color rising in, in Prudence's uh, face, especially when you you make mention uh, wanting to buy her a place. But you also then see Mavesies reach out and put a hand on her shoulder. And for just half a second, like, you see her about to say something, but then she looks at him. And the, the two of them have a bit of a uh, exchanging looks moment. And yeah. eventually she just kind of nods a little bit and Mavesies says, I'm sure we can come to some sort of arrangement. For now, I think... Find just a place to that we know uh, we can stay at for a day or two is best. Nod. 
That's understandable. I can. The important thing to me is is seeing my sons. Anything else is negotiable. I can deal with it. And I, I mostly say that to Prudence to try to convince her. I know the kind of man you think I am. I can deal with it. I can. <laughs> she she uh, just looks at Mavesies again and, and nods and she says for at, at least the, for at least the next couple of days we'll be here I suppose. It's, it is getting kind of late and I, I think we're all fairly exhausted. And I, I know I could use a bath after all that that dust and whatnot. So at the very least, we have a day or two to have another conversation, Ichabod. Yeah. I'll work with whoever I need to in terms of city planning to make sure that not only do they have food food and housing, but a place where they can, like, take a bath. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, so the the great thing about being uh, being in your position is Ichabod, the, the lord of this area, is very accommodating to your group. Because you oh, yeah. put you literally put him in power again, so he he will set things up to where um, uh, prudence and and fear not and will have a, a place to stay. And Mavesies, uh, it doesn't surprise anyone that Mavesies is staying there too. Um, the the thief kids, as I'm calling them, like uh, seem to want to stay together, and uh, after some negotiations um edmund offers them a big enough place so that all of them can stay on um with prudence and and mavesies okay so they are all in the same house yeah so all, all of them stay at the same house uh, um which is going to be a mansion not too far from you in the upper city who is another one of the the mansions of the um what were they? Five yes, star of, yeah, of, five star nights. Yep, of the of the star nights. Yes, it's it's another one of the cleaned out <laughs> and refurbished mansions from from that. Um, it's Portly owns mansion. No, Portly owns mansion. You burned down. Remember? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you you straight up burnt his oh, mansion to times. the ground. Good times. <laughs> good times. <laughs> well. But yeah, uh, by the end of the day. Um, you all walk them to their, their new house, one of the mansions that's been cleaned out here in the upper city. Um, fortunately, you had all gone through all of the, the possessions of the knights when they left. Like, uh, Edmund made sure you, you had the opportunity to go through everything. So there's not like, it, it, you, you, there's no worry that the place is like booby trapped or anything like that. Your, your group and the soldiers had cleared out and refurbished these places in the months since you've all been, you know, saved the city or whatever so anyway um there's some there's some time of uh going through and checking things out and um fortunately prudence is there to at least give some motherly guidance to to the to the the young um thieves thief kids yeah the thief kids i, um, I would like to say something to ishmael if i can get a moment with him okay um so you're basically waiting for a moment to get him alone yeah okay you can certainly do that. Um, there's a moment when, like, uh, all the kids have been running around for, through the upper levels, uh, choosing what rooms they're going to share. Um, Prudence is, is uh, somewhere with Fear Not. Um, Mavesies is, is gone somewhere. And you walk up to the door just as uh, the, the redhead um, leaves it and see Ik Ishmael sitting there. Um, he has a, his uh, saddlebags uh, draped over one of the beds and seems to be rummaging through um, the sack that he was carrying. Um, I, I clear my throat. Um, he, he, he jumps a little bit and he, he whirls around his hands at his dagger, but then he realizes it's you and, you know, gives you that awkward uh, scowl that he's been giving you lately. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to get out your hair real quick. I just wanted to come by and say, least you can do is come clean with your mother. Um, his eyes kind of go down a little bit when you mentioned that. And he, he says... Well, I assumed you had already told her. No, I'm giving you the chance to do the right thing, but I will tell her if you don't. He, he scowls a little bit about, with that. and you, you know, you see him kicking his uh, the toe of his, his foot against the floor, and he says, and, and, and what good would that do now? 
It's about doing the right thing, Ishmael. I know you've been seeking other guidance lately, but that still matters to people, and that's your mother. Well, you know what? Make one more persuasion check for me. So good. I know. Yay, 23! Yes! <laughs> Finally. Finally. Um, Ishmael hangs his head a little bit and says, Fine, father. I suppose it would, better be, it would be better coming from me than from you anyway. I'll tell her. Um, and then I turn to walk away, and I pull out that little scale again, and I go, I know why you probably didn't want this. I've made religion kind of a a dagger to you, I suppose, but I, I'd still feel better if you had it, and I put it on the little dresser and walk <laughs> away. Okay, you set it down on the, the dresser and just walk mm -hmm. away. And um, I feel like it's a lucky charm now. <laughs> yeah, as you're walking away, our... The, our, the camera kind of pans to Ishmael, and um, you, you hear a, a little bit of a thunk um, for, with your passive perception. Um, what the camera shows is that he he pulls out a da his dagger and stabs it into the bedpost of the bed. <laughs> but then he like looks at the at the scale that you left on his dresser, and he just stares at it for a while. But anyway, while that's going on, um, what are the rest of y'all doing? Tub. <laughs> Hot tub. Hot tub. I mean, there was all kinds of like dust and grit and grime in the air there, so I probably am feeling gross. No, that's fair. Absolutely. Um, you can head straight back to your mansion. Um, it's been a while since you've been there, but you do ha you did hire a, a, a couple <laughs> servants to to take care of the place while you've been gone. So you, you do have somebody there. You have a cook and you have a butler who works there. Um, and they open the door and greet you and uh, let you get back to, to your home. Um, nothing's changed since you've been gone, but uh, the hot tub is there and it's waiting for you. And it's, oh, it's nice. Oh. Absolutely. What about the rest of you? probably also go and take a soak okay so you you head in and find corn sitting there butt ass naked in in his elf form uh just oh, yeah. hanging out in the tub i feel like uh i feel like <laughs> lapis would be the least bothered by nudity probably yeah this is, this is fair lapis isn't interested in any of that so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you just go and you join and you get in the tub as well what about you blazner uh, I'm gonna use prestidigitation to clean myself off. Okay. Uh, and I'm probably gonna use the hot tub later, but... But uh, wait, and wait, wait till everybody else is gone? Yeah, just so I can have some a moment alone. And, uh, I'm, I'm probably just gonna wander the streets of, uh, Coltrast. Okay. Because you can uh, walk around without getting robbed here, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, just gonna it's wander. true. I'm gonna make sure no one's, uh... No one's uh, uh, doing anything untoward. Fair enough. So it's been a it's been a few weeks since you've been in Coltrast. It, it took you a while to get to Rowena, um, and then you've been there for a few days. So um, walking the streets now, it's probably around uh, five six o'clock in the evening. The sun is just starting to set, and people are starting to head home from their daily tasks. the um, The wall is still there. It, it they're they're leaving it the the wooden wall that had been built around, but there is a lot more people um, moving and moving about. The general vibe of the town is one much more joyous than when you the first time you ever arrived. People are actually uh, seem more well fed than than they had been. the The general demeanor of the of the common folk is uh, one of hope instead of uh, one of fear that um, they had when Lord Veritude was was uh, rule, was ruling. Um, but uh, apart from that, like uh, nothing crazy is going on right now. People are just uh, living their lives, tending their fields. Um, you do see more orcs about. Um, the whole tribe of, of orcs has, has come to Coltrast, and they're currently building 
uh, a small settlement to the to the north. But uh, a lot of them are, are making their way back and forth, trading, hunting. Uh, uh, they, je- they pretty much uh, assist the, the local militia here in Coltrast as they're building their homes. So there is also some expansion here in Coltrast. People are actually, you know, um, fixing up the buildings, uh, cleaning up the place. Um, uh, it, it's becoming a, a much more lively town than the, the co- gothic mess it was when you first arrived. Do we still have that big wooden wall? Like yes. Yeah, the big wooden wall has been left. They were up. like working on a moat, if I remember. Are we mm-hmm. continuing the moat? Um, the <laughs> moat hasn't been uh, worked on since since uh, since then. They were being forced to, to dig it out as well as yeah. dig out the the underside of the keep, the the lower chamber. They've been working on that. Um, all that stopped, and most of the effort has been into growing food, um, farming, refurbishing um, the town, and building it back up, and and doing a bit of expansion so the the wall's still there the moat hasn't been touched since and they're just really trying to put effort into cleaning up the town and making it uh livable again all right uh speaking of um whenever i'm finished with what i was doing i would like to go to uh the underneath the keep because i had asked bash lord grig that druid to like investigate the root so i want to see if he's come up with anything okay um, so you're doing that this evening? Sure. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, got time. Yeah, you head back up to um, to the keep, which is not far from where your mansion is, mm-hmm. um, and start heading your way back down. Um, the first thing you notice is that it's much more heavily guarded than the last time you went through. Like that, um, the Good. first when when the keep was first retaken, there was like a handful of guards, and you told them, "No, nah, you need to." you need to be protecting it a lot more and uh since that advice you do see there is much they're much more vigilant um there's uh there's uh three different guard posts that's that's been set up one in the the crypt itself one um they actually have dug out a bit of a uh, of a side panel um and there's a little lookout station halfway down and then in the forest itself there's uh there's a, a watch outpost, so there's three tiers of uh, of protection between the keep and and that lower chamber. The lower chamber is just as big as the last time you came down here. It is still a gigantic forest, but the the thing that's changed about it is they've actually set up um, um, some lights down there. There, because um, people are are actually down there now. So it is illuminated, um, and you can see in the distance that huge column of, of rock that's covered in vines, um, and the druid is actually up there right now, um, who seems to be uh, working. Okay, I'll make my way up there um, and say, hey, Bachelor, we're back. Yeah, uh, Bachelor Grig is a very old gold-scale uh, dragonborn. Um, he's the arch druid of a nearby uh, uh, circle that um, um, he the, his uh, he was actually friends with uh, Edmund's father and grandfather back in the he's day. He's from so. Fay Walker's Glen. Yeah, That's Fay Druid Grove. Yep, Fay Walker's Glen. Um, and when you come back, he he greets. Oh well, uh, welcome back. I, I I I hope you had a profitable profitable um journey since our last encounter uh, we've we've gotten a little tougher too uh corin wants me to tell you he can pay you back that six level spell slot <laughs> um uh, but, well, but i came i came down for more important reasons he, he just kind of chuckles and he just says <laughs> oh tell corin to just pay it forward it's no, uh, i i i do not <laughs> expect any payment uh, this thing however has been very very interesting. Yeah? What have, what have you learned? Maybe I should get Corrin down here for this. He's kind of the smart one. Uh, per, well, perhaps you, you should have brought him along with you, I suppose. Uh, perhaps I should have. Well, I'll, I'll report back to him. <laughs> Spill beans. <laughs> well, um, I suppose the first thing I can tell you is uh, that while this um, artifact is indeed petrified, there is still a semblance of life within it. Using uh, yeah. my magic, I've been able to trace that uh, the length of this root 
goes across the entirety of the continent of Europa. It stretches to every part, and there's at least some fragment of it pretty much everywhere on the continent. I've been able to sense its reach goes out almost like a web across the whole thing. It is ancient. As ancient an object as anything I've ever been able to study. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking that this is uh, that dream and tree we've been hearing so much about. Um, trying to make a resurgence. Did you discover anything that might... I don't know if this is particularly your forte, um, but that might stop its growth or, or destroy it even? Uh, it, it It is not growing it, itself. It's... Um... As I said, it is petrified. So um, this is a remnant of uh, from an age long, long past. Okay. So it needs an outside influence to grow. It's not just doing it itself. Oh, yes. This thing is long, long dead. It's been fragments that I've been able to take and, and analyze. I would guess it's uh, more than 10,000 years dead. Well, Bashlor, I know uh, this might be putting you out a lot if you haven't been back to your to your grove. Um, but if this is something that interests you, I I can make it worth your while to keep checking it out. Let us know anything that you find. Um, I I am indeed interested in continuing to study this thing. So I will be. I was planning on staying for for a while and and studying it. But I will always uh, I, I, take any help that that can be given. Um, I've actually right. sent in for more druids from my grove to come and assist us here. All right. I'd like to work out a, a wage for Bachelor and his druids so that, because I know he's interested in it, but it is like, okay, now you're basically living in this town. So I want to yeah. make sure he's comfortable. No, absolutely. Um, so we can work on that outside okay. of if we need to. Sure, absolutely. But yeah, I, I do appreciate it, and I'll let uh, I'll let Corn and my other par- rest of my party know and see if there's anything else they might be able to check out about it. Um, and then before I go, I want to put my left hand up to it because last time I did, I felt like certain locations where where things were like roots well, or whatnot. So what what you're able to ascertain is like that there are distant pings. Like you're not able okay. to to coordinate or anything like that it's too far away for that but what you can do as you reach out towards it like it's high above but you reach out with your hand and you do feel that pulse the pulse that's in your hand coming from that fragment of a seed the pulse from the 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 root it's still there you can still feel that innate connection between the two and it's it almost as though it they pull towards one another just a little bit, like you can feel a bit of resistance there. A- as I, you as you do, uh, Bachelor says, "We believe as 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 you do that this is the, a remnant of the legendary Dreaming Tree. Connection to it reveals what like as you if you try to meditate." upon it and, and and touch it, you can actually get a bit of a, um, you, you, you can sense something, almost as though something is watching you, and it is very, very um, worrisome and, and disconcerting of a sensation. Yeah, I, I pull my hand away, <laughs> and I look at Bachelor, and I say, where do you and the druids stand on this dream and tree? I've met People in both camps, some who want it to return and think it would bring about a better world, and others who know it would destroy everything. And I, I look at him like very scrutinizing. Okay. Um, the druid replies, the, the tales of, of the Dreaming Tree speak of great wisdom and knowledge that passed through it um, in ancient mm-hmm. days and, and brought, ab- brought about the the all of all life on on this continent they is said to originate from 
the tree of dreams. How? So, it, it's it's hard to know where myth and legend uh, separate from from reality. This could be something of great power and great influence. That could be a boon to the natural world. And we druids always believe that um, life should always be allowed to flourish. However, at the same time, when something uh, sickens and, and rots um, that natural thing, that natural thing, such as a tree, to save the rest of it, it must be cut out. The, the rot must be cut out. All right. Sounds like you're kind of uh, in a bit of a middle camp here. You think it could be something good if we get rid of the bad? Am I following you? It, I suppose it depends on what the bad is that comes along with it. There's not a lot of knowledge about the Dreaming Tree beyond those few sm uh, scraps of myth and legend, even among the the groves. Um, can I have an insight check to see if Bachelor's fascination with this tree could be manipulated into uh, uh, becoming a follower? Like, do I feel like, because from what he just said, I feel like he's going to study this thing and become a follower of the dreamer, which I obviously don't want. <laughs> okay, so so you're trying to get, do, you want to do an insight check to see whether or not he's creating Yeah, I want to see, like, is there a spark in his eye? Is there a little sparkle there? Like, ooh, this is well, so cool and interesting and also full of wisdom. Will yeah. fascination yeah. turn into obsession? Yes, yeah, like it has with everybody else who gets interested in this thing. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead and make an insight check. It's only a 12. So, like, he seems, he definitely seems interested in it. Um, you can tell that there's definitely some curiosity there, but you, you're not sure if it's uh, just the curiosity of uh, a, a, a druid um, uh, studying at literal nature, or if, like, he's getting possessed. There, there's no clear way to tell. He doesn't seem possessed. He doesn't seem like he's... He has like some evil be. behind his eyes or anything even like have that. To be yeah, possessed. like he, he could become a follower. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, uh, with a twelve, there's no real way to tell one way or another. He doesn't yeah. seem like he's evil, and he doesn't seem like he's possessed. He just seems like he's interested in studying, right. um, uh, obviously a, a a piece of nature that has never really been studied before. I take a step towards Bashlor and put a. And put a big hand on his shoulder mm -hmm. and grip him a little tightly. And I say, just remember, Bachelor, we fought a, a giant beholder down here, a tyrannical beholder down here that wanted this thing back. Don't let that curiosity become anything more than that. <laughs> um, the, the, the bad is bad enough. Okay, it's bad enough. The, the old dragonborn just kind of smiles, that one reptilian smile, and he says, uh, Do not worry, uh, Mr. Sykes. Uh, I, I, I do know what I'm doing. I am being very careful in my research of this object. All right. I'm glad we could have this talk. Hmm. I walk away, but I'm definitely taking mental note to keep a very close eye on Bachelor. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But you make your way back... Um, to your mansion, uh, probably about the time Corrin and Lapis are finishing up their bath. Don't get out on my account. Just walk out nude. Shield my eyes. <laughs> well, Ichabod, I didn't see you there. Yeah, Wait, pretty much. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh no. I'm, when we were in Rowena, we were looking at a lot of a lot of like <laughs> magazines. <laughs> okay, this is not Ichabod's uh, first first. Uh, I don't know what to call it. I'm done. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that there. Well, uh, with that in mind, though, what all what what are you wanting to do uh, now that you're back in Coltrass, other than taking a bath? Time to spend some money. If they've got stuff we can buy, sure, let's go look and see what they can buy. Well, I would like to get my uh, my Mariner's armor enchanted to be a plus one. Fair. 
so that it can re replace my current armor without the blow to my AC. Hey, what do you know? The uh, leader of the rebellion is a forge cleric. <laughs> well, well, yes, th that is technically accurate. He was uh, a forge cleric. Um, there isn't, like, Coltress is not uh, a big city like Rowena or oh, any, any of the many other places. There is no enchanter here in Coltrest. Yeah, yeah, hire someone. Gonna, are we going we to have to go, go there tomorrow if you want? Go where? Oh, do you have the teleportation circle to get to? Oh, wait. I think we can because of the. Um, yeah, we'd have to go the with. The Conclave. Yeah, we'd have to go with uh, Com Comrade Turtle. Comrade Turtle. But yes, okay. we have. I have two teleportation circles. It's just the other one is the King's, so we don't want to hop in on that one unannounced. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, no. Um, all right. Well, I'm I'm down for a shopping trip in. Uh, I forgot the name of the town, but you know, the capital city. You're, you mean North Amia? North Amia, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's in my brain somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. So the plan is to head to North Amia in the morning. I like that I could pull Bachelor Grig, but I could not pull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's funny because I was like sitting there. Fuck, what is the the druid's like, name? I couldn't remember. <laughs> but yeah, you, I have it. I remembered, but that's only because I have it written down that I owe him a sixth level spell slot for bringing me back to life. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, I, he's in my notes. Uh, I just wasn't pulling up my notes. I was just like, what is that guy's name? But you knew right away, so good job. Oh yeah. But yeah, um, do you do anything else um, this evening? Or are you just all uh, making your way to bed and settling up for the night? Um, I got a feeling my family don't want to see me again today, so I'm not going to bother. Obviously, I handed out everybody their stuff that I got for them. They should already have it all written down. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone has. Uh, yeah, I, I assume everyone has written down the things that uh, Corin passed out to them. Correct. I, th I think so. And uh, I will at least what? ask Edmund at some point when we're talking to him if there's anything that the did I not Coltress particularly needs as of late. Uh, sorry, uh, Brandy was just talking to me without using the thing. Um, I she was asking uh, Edmund if there was anything that Coltress needs as of late. Give me one second. I'm, I'm, I just got to move, put something on her sheet. Sure. Sure. It was just the circle of the blasting that you needed, Randy? That's all I got. Okay. I thought they gave that to Liam. No, um, that's what, uh, what's her name? Uh, Effie gave to Lavis. Okay. Sure. Wholesome. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, there, you, that's on your character sheet now. So, um, you all head off to bed, um... It's probably nice yeah. to be back in your own beds again after that long journey. Did the next mention anything that Coltrass needs? Um, or you do that before before you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or I mean, or in the morning, you know, it doesn't matter. Just at some point before we leave. Sure, sure. Um, and can I can I ask one thing real quick? Okay. Okay. Going back to when remember, um, Ichabod was reaching out to touch the the dream root. Did anything happen to my seed at that? point in time when he did i think yeah. that embedded in me i imagine that when like you were sitting in the tub what when he was doing that and you would feel just like a an odd sort of uh pulse from from the seed in your shell like it's just a, a little bit of a vibration that happens for a few seconds and then it goes away and huh that was weird sus Dussy in the bussy. But, um, Corn, if you go go in and ask, Ed, like, when, when you say things he needs, like, just in, in general for, for the city? Any or? kind of supplies, anything that the city is seriously hurting for, anything that he wants personally from the city that I can get for him because okay. he is a gotcha. politician and therefore busy. On yeah, right yeah, now. gotcha. Um, so... For the most part, no, he really doesn't. Um, he, 
in in the since he's taken over, he's been actually like uh, um, securing supply lines from North Amia and the other cities uh, back to Coltrass to get foodstuffs in. Um, they've been taking a lot of lumber and supplies from the nearby forest and. Um, like generally, he's most of his time that he's been uh, been here. He's been spending like actually getting the things he needs for for Coltress. So um, he might like uh, give you a few documents to um, to pass out. It's not going to be like a huge chore or anything like that. Like you can um, if you're he if you're heading to North Amia, um, he'll give you like a handful of letters that you just um, he wants you to to give to a courier and have distribute gives you a few coins to to pay for it but uh, apart from that like there's nothing in particular he specifically needs you to pick him up that's fine cool okay um is there anything else you want to do in coltrass before you make your way to north amia nah let's go shopping shopping trip Ooh. love shopping so fun yep love that shopping okay um well do you, um, Corn, do you have the the sending spell? Let me check and see if I do. Uh, what level? Let me see what level that would be. I think it's either a th I think it's a third or a fourth. Yeah, I think it's third. Sending third level? No, I do not. Okay. Big oof. <laughs> well. <gonna> <laughs> Well, so yeah, uh, this is what happens. Y'all yeah, don't really think about it. Um, you're just planning on a trip to North Amia. So, well, uh, does Lapis say anything to us? Lapis, we need you to come because uh, you're kind of our our guide. Ticket to ride. Yeah, yeah, definitely go. All right. Yeah, I imagine like everybody is is heading to North Amia. I assumed all four of you were going. Yeah. So you cast the spell. Um, go ahead and mark off another use of the chalk off your sheet. Um, sure, I'll and need to buy more when we're there. okay. You and you transport to the erudite conclave in North Amia. The moment you arrive, the same thing happens as it always does. Alarms go off. A shit ton of soldiers come bursting through. These are actually conclave monks that um, work in the conclave there and, and guard it. And they all come rushing in and damn near tackle you all as you make Settle your down. way through. Settle down. No, like, this is exactly what happens um, anytime someone just randomly shows up unannounced. I know, I'm telling them. Yeah, settle yeah, down. yeah, yeah, you say settle down as they all ar basically arrest you or try to until Lapis is like, no, 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 I'm a, I'm a conclave member. Um, basically, 20 minutes later, you're sat down in front of a, um, a uh, research liaison. Um, one of the individuals who works for the conclave, who um, deals with your your file, um, Lapis, and they tell you, th uh -oh. they, they first of all they 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 um they tell you they that it's nice it's good to, to see you back from Rowena because you you were signed up for a mission for them and they want to know how it went. But before they get into that, they pr basically spend an hour chastising your entire group <laughs> um, for teleporting into their their lo their building without um, without authorization or warning. Um, which I is a big no-no. I will just mention, uh, quite sorry, my uh, total friend did not inform me that we were required to do so. In the future, I shall absolutely make sure that she does not have such lapses in judgment. <laughs> Throwing Lapis <laughs> under the bus. Make oh, a yes. make a persuasion <laughs> check. Carded. Make a persuasion check with advantage for throwing Lapis under the bus. Uh, yeah. Guidance. Yeah, we're all like, we didn't know, you know, she never told us. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, now, now I realize that you are uh, a, a, a brand new member uh, to the uh, field researchers, but you must remember this, Lapis. Um, or actually, they call you Kaya, because that was the last name you had you had um, given them, and you have to explain that, no, you're, you're Lapis now. And they have to make another fucking note in your file, changing your name. And they also inform you that you now have a black mark in your file um the next time you teleport into one of their locations unannounced there will be uh consequences for that 
Um, well, but I know what I've got to pick up. Yeah. I definitely apologize. And then I pull out. Wasn't I uh, gathering sacks of heads? You. Yeah, we have like all the blue dragon heads. You actually do. Um, you have the, your uh, your haversack of colding, which um, holds all of the um, the specimens you have collected during that time, and they will settle up with you. Um, after the, the chastisement is over, and Ichabod, I feel like you probably enjoyed that a little bit more than you probably should have. Do I like to get chastised? I, yeah. I mean, you, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I do. You know you do. What do you, what, what do you even I do argue? I like when somebody's mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not, I can't seem to find that haversack of colding in here at all. He definitely did write it down somewhere. Yeah. I think there's a um, handout for it, isn't it? Party I thought so. There should be, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I know it was in there. I remember looking at it. It might be called Bag of Colding. Yeah, I know I gave you one. No, because I remember putting, um, you know, putting in heads and stuff that I had collected, and I completely forgot to collect Yeah, it's in the Circus Journal. Four blue dragon wormling heads, four adult Kruthic, two young Kruthic, one Kruthic hive lord. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. Would I have been able to collect heads from the um um from from the tournament or no no, no you would not have been able to they they specifically They're were like, taking uh, the bodies no. yeah they they specifically were taking the bodies um away after it, after each battle they they were not giving them away but um let's see here. So, so, um, be accurate then of what heads I would have collected. Yes, it was just the heads that you collected on your journey down there. But you did get a few things and uh, and all that. I'll, also, didn't you uh, fight some trolls or something before you uh, before you got out of uh, Radagast? I thought. You mean the trolls that nobody but the wizard was burning? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the one that nobody but the wizard was burning. Yeah, we I fought like know. six trolls, I believe it was. It was like five regular and then one poison troll. I would have definitely collected those too. I almost yeah. died. Yeah, I'll dead. yeah, I'll allow you to um add those heads in. You weren't even close to dying, Blaze near. I still had thirty I... lay on hands. I was down. <laughs> nah, you were fine. I had two fails. You were fine. Should I, should I put those in <laughs> the journal or not? It was just scratch. <laughs> I was about to die. I was gonna heal you, like next turn, I swear. <laughs> okay, so, so, so the way, um, so when as they're settling up their accounts with you, um, the contract that you sign, Kaya, um, is that the the work performed by the adventurer to compete in the Azure Championship um, shall be a flat rate of fifteen hundred gold pieces. So you are given um, the, those of you who fought in the tournament, um, you get in, you get another fifteen hundred gold just for fighting in the tournament. Um, you did not. You did not get the thousand platinum pieces because you did not recover the dream route. But um, the heads that you acquired, um, you get a payment of 50 gold pieces per head. So let's see, that is... Um, you can keep that lapis, you can have it. <laughs> I don't need it. So um, for the heads, there was... How, ma how many trolls were there? There was five, I believe. Six. Uh, six of them total. Yeah, five regular the... and one poison troll. Yeah. So, so... so you have 17 total specimens um, to g deliver to the, the, the conclave, which they do accept and, and kind of go through and, and look at them. And, and there's some researchers that come up and collect them. Matt. So. While she's having people collect her specimens, I will ask someone from the Conclave if they're interested in this, and I'll pull out a vial of Kerthic acid. Uh, what is that, that? I have two of two vials of Kerthic acid. Uh, Kerthic acid. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you show them that, and you ask if they're interested, and, and they they tell you that they're the. Um, 
the research uh, uh, people down in the conclave are always interested in in unique poisons and acids and that sort of thing. Um, for it was cathric uh, acid. Um, it's not like tons of money. They'll give you uh, twenty five gold uh, for a sample. Sure. I will sell them one of my vials then. Okay. And, they, and you get another 25 gold. Um, in total for the heads, you, your group gains another 900 gold pieces. You guys can split that three ways. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, so it does 900, so that's plus 300 for everybody. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And then Blaze oh. near Lapis and Ichabod, you each got uh, 1,500 gold pieces for fighting in the tournament. For the tournament, sure. Yep. I am good with that. Um, I did just remember there's actually something I want to investigate here at the Conclave. Which is uh, the Manual of Gainful Exercise. I want to see what info they might have on it. Okay. You have to get her to do that, probably. Yeah, um, you are informed that um, people, uh, non-members of the Conclave aren't like this isn't a library where anyone can just go up and and do research. Um, however, since you did fight in the tournament, you um, are eligible to be to join the conclave if you would like to. Uh, no kings, no masters, no thank you. <laughs> okay, does that mean I get that cool book thing? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, basically, uh, signing up, joining the conclave, they they tattoo you, um, give you a magical tattoo that um. Uh, it, it always holds a book and an ink pot and a quill, um, and it's used to um, to you, basically you you're, you use it to record notes and all your okay. research um, at, and on your missions. And it back to them. Uh, no, uh, every time you come back, you actually have you to, have to um, deliver, it. deliver it, and they give you a new one. And there's like a whole ritual involved in, in doing this. Yeah, I want to know because if I were to join this. I would work for them, essentially, right? Yeah, you would be a member of the Conclave and you're eligible to take contracts and uh, occasionally they, they they assign people tasks when they need to and, and that sort of thing. Right. Do, yeah, so, cool. um, so like false idols to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to. Since Lapis is a member, um, everyone who, who works with Lapis is considered a subcontractor. Okay. I, yeah. just, I just want a cool book thing. Are you, are you saying you you're wanting to join up as well, Blazner? Uh, I'm gonna say like, oh, can I just like, would it be possible just to get the cool book thing as like a some sort of reward, or do I have to what? like, because like, no, they I don't, mean, can, they don't if give I have that. If I join, away. then I'll join. But uh, you know, I guess it's... you could probably buy such a thing in in the city if that's you what think? you wished. Um. Probably. Well, so. I'll remind you, Corn, of something because this com- this topic of conversation came up once before in your presence um, when you were with um, Shadows in the Wind, and they were all mm-hmm. talking about ways to sneak things in. Um, they they were had talked about the Conclave tattoo that that they had and how um, it was specifically um, created to just do these books, but then uh, Shadows in the Wind knew how to who knew somebody who knew how to modify them and um anyone who wanted one at the time was able to buy that tattoo now i don't think you actually did one did you no okay not yeah because you have the spell so you can do it on your own so you didn't need to um so you you do remember that um it's 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 a very special spell created by the conclave um, for their field researchers to use to have a way to, to always keep notes on hand. Um, so you're you're familiar enough. You've heard of it before, and, and you know what they're talking about. But um, you would also know that they don't just give it out to for free, and they don't just like give it to people who aren't conclave members. Uh, Blaisner, are you looking for the book or the tattoo? Well. Like, Maybe do you, like, do you want a, a tattoo that can store something, or do you want a book that like never runs out of ink with and paper? I guess. Well, I th- I just thought the book was cool, and you know <laughs> I could write start writing my autobiography or something. Well, perhaps you should just join Blaze near. Oh, if you, you know, wish. I don't want to the Devil's Playground, so. Well, it's just yeah, it's um, just I don't want all that responsibility because I probably will forget. If you wish for a book, you can probably buy one here. If you wish for oh, the tattoo, that is more difficult, but could potentially be accomplished. 
Yeah, if you just want to... I mean, just... If... Shouldn't if you... be hard to get you a book with unlimited pa basic paper and ink, if yeah. that's what you want. You could just buy a, a, a magically enchanted pot of ink that never runs out and a, a magically enchanted book that has tons of paper in it. No, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> But, uh, anyway, yeah, I don't want, I don't necessarily on. want to join, so. Uh, okay. Lapis, you mind doing this favor for me? And getting some info? Yeah, I'll, I'll do Well, would they allow me to take a book, um, and let her, or no, let him No, they will oh. not. They absolutely okay. will not. What they, what they will allow to do, um, is whenever you as a member want to do research for somebody else, you can come in and spend time doing that research. And they have a, a research liaison who works with you to give, to find the things you're, you're, the information you're wanting. You cannot like take books out of, out of their libraries. You can, however, take, you can, you can read those books and you can make notes yourself and you can like, um, write down. They, would, they wouldn't let Ichabod in there. They would not let Ichabod in there as a non-member, and they will not allow you to take books out. There are some books that you can just purchase, like uh, they have a library of uh, books on language and things like that that they'll allow you to buy copies of. But like uh, subjects of research specifically, they do not allow non-conclave members access to it. Okay, well then that's fine. I'll I'll do the research. I'll you know have I'll have. Ichabod, um, keeping in mind that I have a negative one to intelligence to write out very explicitly what he wants me to research for. Him. That's all right. I'm too smart myself. So I, I do appreciate it, though. Okay. So um, you're 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 wanting you've you've heard about um, uh, books that can like reading them are ma they're magical and they enhance you after reading them. Um, Corin, you, you've actually, you, you've, you haven't seen it because you, you, I don't know if you're allowed to see it or not, but you, you definitely know of one. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can just speak out loud that lapis. You don't have to type it. I know. I just didn't want to interrupt anyway, but does anybody else need me to research anything while I'm there? Might as well just get it all done in one go. Uh, if you can find any sort of circle that would get us any closer to Ravinika, uh, teleportation circle, that is. Uh, you mean Rani Vika? Rani Vika. Yep. Yes, Rani Vika. Okay, uh, I, helpful. yeah, I'll definitely see, is this, I'm guessing that'd be something I'd be able to look into possibly, you, right? You can certainly try. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll try to do that too. Okay. Um, Bla Blazner, do you, do you need any any research done? Uh, don't believe so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are there any pressing questions or concerns that you might want to research, Lapis? Um. <laughs> I'll have to think on that. <laughs> Fair enough. You have to think about it. Um, so, well, if you're going to stay here and, and spend your time researching, um, is there anything you want them to pick up for you while while they're out shopping? I mean, like I have a crap ton of money, but there's like not much that I as a, a monk can really use. No, not really. Unless, unless you allow me to um, make my brass knuckles plus two. I mean, you could find somebody who you can get somebody to enchant them. You do know of an enchanter here in North Amia who has done work for you in the past. Um, it usually takes time to enchant things, um, but you can also pay extra to get rush jobs on them. I mean, it's also going to take me time to research. So yes, it not will. That much time, though. No, but not that much time. Well, that's fair. I mean, I've got plenty of money. I'm sure I can <laughs> afford to have. <laughs> I'm sure I can afford to pay for it to be rushed. So. Okay, so you're gonna pass off your plus one um, brass knuckles to um, to to Corin, Ichabod, and Blazinger, and ask them to try to get um, to get these enhanced to plus two. Is that about right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, the only other 
thing that would be better is also making them vicious, but I think that would be pushing it. Well, there's also elemental enchantments that can be added, but the higher, the more powerful they get, the they become a, they need to um, be attuned. So yeah. if you're looking for something that's not attunable, you just want to give them like the the pl another plus, plus or uh, something that doesn't require attunement. Okay. Yeah. Does vicious require attunement? I don't think vicious does because it just affects criticals. If I can afford it, I would like them to be vicious plus two. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to do some. I'm gonna have to look up that for some. Um, you know, because I'm not sure yeah, just, exactly how much. That just works. we can settle that outside of um, the game. As far as, you know, costs and all that. But just, it'll, it'll be known that they went and did it for me. It does yeah. not say that it requires attunement. Yeah, okay, so Vicious does not. So that's that's good at least. Okay, so uh, Lapis, you in, inform your research liaison that you want to do some research and you have a few topics that you want to, to pull up. And they, they take your list and, and head off. They also um, provide an escort. For Ichabod, Corn, and Blazenear to be escorted out of the Conclave grounds. Because they, they will not let you out of their sight. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they, they don't they, trust them. Well, not only do they not trust you um, because you're non-members, um, pretty much everybody is escorted around. Even Lapis. Um, she's d not given free reign to go anywhere in this place. They're, they're, they're very... They're, I mean, it's, it's, it's a library. They're, they're, they're jealous of their, their knowledge. So, um, your group head out and um, start heading to the the um, Enchanter. Does anybody remember the Enchanter they dealt with while they were here in North Amia? Not getting two from me in one day. <laughs> uh, you'd be lucky to get one from me. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. I have... I didn't even know we went to Enchanter in this town. Let me look at my notes. I remember is Falvar's that... finest pawn shop, but that is different. Is that, is that Melvin or something? No, uh, that's not Melvin. That's a different. That's uh, Coins' campaign, and he based oh, it off of uh, off of Enchanter from uh, Port Valena in my game. No, um, the the Enchanter here in North Amia is uh, Antioch's Arcana, um, and Antioch is an an old uh, half orc who um, has an odd flair for jokes and, um, strangely enough, knows everybody's name the moment they step into the, the building. Um, he a Antioch greets you as you arrive and uh, calls you out by name and and calls you over to him and he says, "Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. What can I do for you?" Hey, Matt. Yes. What name does he use for me? Um, it's disconcerting, but he actually calls you Corin. Okay. It's as though that, um, he, he understands that names are a choice, and if you choose your name to be something, that's what he's going to refer you as. Cool. Guys, sus. They're all uh, sus. <laughs> we are looking to purchase certain items as well as your services on this fine day. Uh, Too much is true. Well, I would assume nothing less since you've stepped into my shop. How can I assist you? Um, I would like to get this here armor, and I give him the Mariner's Plate armor. I would like to get this enchanted to be a plus one, and then I've also got another set of plus ones I gesture to myself that I'd like to sell to you. Okay. If you're buying. Um, so en enchanting... So he, he he examines the armor that that you have, the Mariner's uh, full plate, and he tells you that he can enchant this um, um, and, and make it more powerful. However, um, doing so, it, it after doing so, it will become an attuned object. Never mind. How much will you pay me for it? Okay, for the Mariner's plate, man, what made you decide that? <laughs> I was thinking about it for a while, and and really. Something. Plus two and vicious wouldn't require attunement. It, plus one and well, the swim speed would. Vicious itself. That, that's the thing that I've been thinking about. Is like, honestly, at once a, a thing has either a two d six enchantment on it, um, or something like that. It 
those kind of things require attunement. Um, any armor that you look up that has an ability um, and it's plus one is typically an attunement. For example, the glamoured studded leather armor. Um, so if you have a, a weapon that has a plus on it and also has an elemental ability that's more than a 1d6, it's probably attunement. Vicious, on the other hand, only affects criticals. And that's why Vicious is not a, an attuned thing, because it's not quite as powerful. I guess I just didn't think it would, because it doesn't have any charges that you expend. Like, all it does is give me 30 feet swim speed. And but, then Mariners by itself is no attunement, and then plus one, plus two, plus three is all not attunement. So I'm like, yeah, it's, I, it's I don't the, know, I don't, I don't feel like a swim speed is that powerful. <laughs> so it's just not worth it to me. That's fine. It's honestly, it's not a very valuable um, suit in and of itself. Um, he he's willing to give you about um, uh, fifteen hundred gold for it. Yeah, I'll take it. Now, as far as um, like just in, enchanting an armor to a plus two. Um, Too much money now. <laughs> I don't even need money. Yeah, um, so... Let's see here. Yeah, because I could just get my current armor plus two. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at, what the difference is. Even though... Yeah, because... Eh, it's whatever. So, um, bas basically taking uh, something from a plus one enchantment to a plus two enchantment is going to be uh, 6,000 gold. I got money. Um, so would that be the same for a sword? Uh, so, yeah, same thing for a sword okay. or um, uh, Lapis's Brass Knuckles. All right, I'm going to do my sword and my armor and give them 12,000 gold pieces. Now, which, which sword? Are you talking about the the son of Bowers? The son of that's already attunement. Okay, that one is uh, the the one that has the the two d six enchantment yeah, on it and and moon touched. Okay, it's everything now. <laughs> yeah, that's um. So he 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 they they will they are able to do it, and like I said, it's going to be an extra six thousand gold to enchant it up to that. Um, mm -hmm. he he also tells you that the time it takes to do it is quite a while. Um, even like it just, uh, working by itself for the $6,000, um, for the 6,000 gold rate, it's going to take about a month to, to enchant. That's the how other fast, part. How fast could you get it done for a rush job? Um, it depends on how much extra you're willing to pay. Basically, um, to, uh, for every week, um, Act, um, every week off is going to be another 2,000 gold because they have to bring in extra people to work on it. And he only has so many people. Mm. Interesting. Um, do we have any idea of like how, how much downtime we're about to have? Um, uh, well, right now, years. yeah, right now, you your group as a whole doesn't have anything that they're planning on doing. You you just completed a job, um, but like um, you haven't uh, accepted any other jobs, and, um, and unless you have something in sp specifically you're wanting to do, you don't like have anything you, you have to do. Go into Rani Vika. <laughs> do I have any um, any inkling how much a house in Coltrass might cost? It depends on uh, how big you're wanting it. Like, uh, actually, um, Modest, just a, a, you, know. you know, like a, a, a decent sized uh, two bedroom, uh, two story house in contrast probably only cost about 4,000 gold. It costs less to buy a house than it does to enchant an, uh, a magical sword. Okay. okay. Probably um, want three the... bedrooms since you got two sons. But yeah, that's the only real other thing that I have for my money. Mm -hmm. So I'll give them four thousand. Cut off two weeks. Okay. So um, 
you you want your uh, you want your sword to be enchanted in, in about two weeks time um, and uh, to do so you're gonna give them an extra four thousand gold so ten thousand for the sword so I would like to see if he can sell me some of the items required for teleportation circle the spell um, you're talking about the 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 component the um, yeah chalk. the components the chalk yeah. and stuff yeah um the, he he the, he does have uh, have that kind of chalk and he's um it, it's basically I believe it's fifty gold uh, you need yes. fifty gold worth and um he he um he will sell it to you at cost he he doesn't charge extra for mages okay so how many uh, um it, how many I'll are buy you buying? five if I can yeah he can do five. He, he, he has a total of eight right now. Sure. And then, uh, does he have a scroll of sending, or does he know sending personally, or have somebody in his shop who does? Um, he he does have a, a scroll of sending that he can sell you if you're, you need that. Um, sure. How much for that? Uh, 620 gold. I will buy that. Okay, you can definitely do that. Um, now, Kaya, you or uh, Lapis, you didn't really give too much instruction about um, getting your brass knuckles enchanted to, to plus two beyond that. But like, um, how how much are you willing to spend on on this? Because just getting it from plus one to plus two, six thousand gold, um, and it takes a month time. But what about the vicious adding on to how much would that cost? I mean, the vicious enchantment is. It, it, I, I find the, this kind of silly because, it, like, uh, it, it's it's a very common, but it's also rare for some odd reason. Um, just the vicious quality itself, um, adding it to something would only be a thousand gold. But um, adding that enchantment plus another enchantment, um, it, it's going to cost a, um, an extra thousand. So in total, um, it would be eight thousand just for those two enchantments. But doing them one on top of the other will take about six weeks to get done. Shoot. Um, I mean, I've got 15,000 gold, so, like, however much it would take to get it to be completed about the same time as everybody else's. Two weeks. So, to get it done in two weeks. 4,000 more? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, what did I say? It's, uh, 2,000 for every week knocked off. Yeah. So, so that would 12. be four. So, that would be four, four extra weeks. So that would be sixteen hundred gold. You mean thousand? Or sixteen thousand, yes, sorry, sixteen thousand gold. Oof. Oof is right. <laughs> um shoot. Well then I guess I'll do vicious later and I'll just can, do the I can spot you a thousand gold if you want. If that's what you needed. Well it's not <sighs> Actually, because I've got like 164 uh, platinums too, so I think I'd have enough after doing maths. Because I've got actually 15,723 gold, so I don't really need that much more for 16,000. Yeah, go ahead, because I mean, what else am I going to buy as a monk? Really? What do you want? Post I mean, those. yeah, but monks don't really do a whole lot. Or they don't use a whole lot, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. There's other stuff. Everybody always goes to magic items. There's <laughs> other things you can spend money on. You absolutely boat. can. There's boat tons of hosts. That's why yeah. I'm like, I'm going to buy a house. We could even try to buy a boat if there's any water around that we might have to sail somewhere. I don't I, think there is. I mean, North Amia is a, a coastal city. Yeah, so we could we could put our money together and buy a ship and, you we know. We could become like, pirates, guys. You could. You could. You don't just have to. Uh, it, like, if you have enough magical gear that buying something more is just like 
icing on, on an already iced cake, you can use your money for other things. You know what? How about this? How about this? I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, why don't I do just the vicious on there? I'll do have a vicious plus one. Okay. I don't need the extra plus one to it for that much. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make it a vicious. So that'd be what, a thousand? Um, so it would be two thousand um, added on. Or wait a minute. No, if I'm yeah, doing just, if you're just yeah, just so it'd be just the yeah, a thousand for the enchantment by itself, um, and uh, and and that should be it because it, it would only take about two weeks to to do. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that then. I'll do just the vicious on there, make it simple, and then yeah, if we want to get a boat or something or whatever, I can pitch in for whatever else we may need because I don't have a whole lot else that I personally would want to get. I'm going to uh, ask him for a price on buying this amulet of proof against detection and location. Oh, oh, uh, he for he will, for? yeah. How much he would buy it for? Yes. I thought you gave that to what's his face, didn't you? No, I guess not. No, I gave him the headband of charisma. That's right. That's right. Um, he he examines the amulet of uh, uh, proof against detection and location, and he tells you that that's a that's an interesting piece. He's uh, willing to buy it for uh, um four thousand gold. Sure. And then I'll ask him if he's got anything interesting in stock. Um, let's see here. Anything interesting. I love the ubiquitous, hey, well, you got this interesting. That's fair. <laughs> Let I'll me go. Oh, oh, I mean, I have uh, I have lists for everything I'll, here. I'll say any, anything of interest to a high-level wizard. Or powerful wizard, if we don't use the term high-level in-game. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered something. <laughs> I remembered something I, I wanted to get. Let's see. Um, they have a rope of entanglement that's kind of interesting. They also have a staff of frost. Ooh, staff. Let me see what the staff of frost does. I have so many um, magical staffs. I would like to get my cloak... Uh, enchanted to be gleaming so it's never dirty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In honor of uh in honor of Paurus, I don't ever want his symbol to break since he has given me this mercy. <laughs> it is fast. But... What what was the name of it again? Just gleaming? Yeah, I think it's a uh, gleaming like cloak. Let me look it up. I think it's a common enchantment. Gleaming. Is there a mad? Wait, is there any magic oh, items really that can spe that can store spells at all? Yes. Oh yeah, ring, ring of spell, spell storing. storing. Oh, ring of spell storing. Yep. So it's usually there's armor of gleaming, magic enchanted armor that's always spotlessly clean. Yeah, that's in Xanathar's guide. It's a common. Okay, yeah, it's a guide. common. It's a common um, enchantment that he can do that for 150 gold. Yeah, that's not expensive at all. I do this for my god. Yeah, absolutely. Me and Bowers are on great terms right now. Love that guy. <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Well, he gave me a miracle. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, the couple interesting items that, that he has... Uh, on hand right now is that rope of entanglement and the staff of frost. Okay, uh, I will ask him. Uh, do you happen to know uh, where I might find information on a particularly large mover and shaker, uh, high priestess of the five? I'm trying to find out what might interest someone like that. Um, well, he said, well, I don't, I don't know too much about the Church of the Five myself, but if you're looking for information about him, I, su 
I would suggest a temple. Um, looking for something in particular for a particular person. Ladies always like flowers and candy and that sort of thing. And he kind of chuckles and he produces a, a bouquet of flowers in his hand. That's hilarious. Can I roll inside on this guy to see if I know what he is? <laughs> like, what do you mean what he is? What is well, he? What is he? He's sus. He's a half orc. <laughs> well, he, but he knows everybody's name when they walk in. So mm -hmm. like, so he's obviously got some kind of uh, ability or magic or. What I is mean, he? sure, make an insight check. See if you can guess what he is. I All mean, right. he is an enchanter. So like, so he, obviously so he enchanted his brain to know everybody's <laughs> name. <laughs> So. It, probably? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I can't see it. 18. Okay, with an 18, you can definitely tell that this half work is a wizard. And since he owns an enchantment shop, he's probably an enchanter. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, what else so do you... Does he cast the text thoughts on every person as they come in? Is that what happens? And I'm always thinking of my name? <laughs> so, like, so um, you as a paladin would have no idea how this works because you're not a wizard. However, I'll just let you know that when I when I rolled my random magic shop generator, it gives a little description of of uh, the of the NPC <laughs> that runs it, and that was the detail they gave. That every time someone comes in, he just uh, he greets them with their name. Nice. I think he's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I want that amulet of proof against detection because I don't Ichabod want is absolutely shook <laughs> that someone yeah. knows his name. If, yeah. If you want it, he's got I, one now. I come in and I try to introduce myself. Uh, like, I am. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, Ichabod. Yeah, Spike. Ichabod. We, like, oh, I, I know. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing. That's my thing. How could you take this from me? <laughs> Okay, well, it's 6 o'clock, so I think this is a great place to end things for this evening. I didn't get to shop. No. You didn't get to shop. Oh, no. But it's 6 o'clock. You can make him a list, and he can say yes or no next time. Exactly. Yeah, did that on purpose to avoid listening to you haggle. Yep. How, how dare you? Tune <laughs> in next time. We'll I only haggle. want one thing. Sure. Well, we'll find out what that one thing is next week. <laughs> Son of a bastard. <laughs> Um, but on behalf of everyone here in the debauchery circus, I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched. Uh, we very much appreciate your support and hope to see you again next week when Blazner apparently is going to try to dicker with this half work um, to buy something. Never. Tune in for more dickering. Tune in for more shopping. Yeah, I would never roll persuasion check to lower the price of an object. Uh -huh. That's just... Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Um, no, but, I wouldn't. But anyway, uh, thank you once again for watching. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.